Hello. We're live. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Full Circle. We're here with another OWC recap, and we're not doing Grand Finals predictions. I do think we have uh, an old title on right now. After we recap Grand Finals, we're going to be doing a kind of... Uh, full campfire episode with a bunch of different staff members to take a look at OWC on the whole. And before we get there, we're going to recap the Grand Finals weekend. I'm Dio, once again joined by T1G and iFlame for the recap of Grand Finals this week. Hey, Hello. Good morning. It was a good morning. It was a good morning. Good afternoon now. But... Nope, it's still morning. I don't care. <laughs> it's morning until it's dark out. Anyway. It's morning somewhere. Good morning until the next morning. Morning anywhere west of us. So Yeah. Know. Yeah. Good enough. All right. So obviously Grand Finals happened this previous weekend. It was the United States winning once again, but it was actually a pretty rocky road to get there this year. Um, even during the Grand Finals weekend. We'll start off with Australia versus the United States, which honestly was not all that rocky of a road for the United States. This was seven one in their favor. Um, the win condition for Australia here was for MREC to 1v9, and unfortunately, uh, that was not what happened during the match. He played very well, um, but he was not able to, you know, like full combo every map in the pool, for example, <laughs> which is kind of what you have to do to win against a lot of the scores that United States was putting up in this match um, compared to the supporting players from Australia. Yeah, and like... Even if Emrek FC'd every map, a lot of these they wouldn't have won anyway because the score gaps were so big. Um, this was just the stage where, unfortunately, Australia's magical run kind of ran out. And I think we kind of anticipated this to be how this match went. Um, Emrek was really the only player left who could compete with multiple players from the USA on some of these maps. Um, obviously, like, you know, Australia skill sets were okay on certain picks, but... I mean, there were a lot of cases where the USA's bottom score would have been like the second highest score on Australia. Um, things like on on Eels or on um, Nomad 4 or, you know, et cetera. There were, there were a few different times where that would have been the case. So this is just team difference, unfortunately. Um, I, you know, shout outs Australia for uh, getting this far. But sooner or later, this was what was going to happen. USA late round scaling always comes in and... Uh, you know, so super proud of what Australia is able to accomplish, but I don't think anybody was super surprised by this particular result. Yeah, it really was just the expected result for Australia. I think it was pretty clear that outside of an M rec pop off, like you guys mentioned, they were just a little bit outscaled. Uh, but I do think Australia has a lot to look forward to for next year, right? There's a lot of promising rookies, a lot of uh, older core members that played really well this year. And uh, obviously, this is their best placement. And you know, I don't know that they have anyone leaving next year, right? So they could come back with an equally strong roster, look for another top three, potentially top two next year, if some of those uh, newer members can approve. Uh, and one thing I do want to highlight about this match is those free mods. All four three mods, I believe, or sorry, the free mods one, two, and uh, three were played in this match. And Rection, Hard Rock, on every single one of them, put up some of the best scores on the team, and he's just such a valuable player to have for the USA. Probably just probably the one of the most valuable players uh, in OWC. It's so good to have that player that can put up insane Hard Rock scores on any free mod, because on so many of the free mod maps, the Hard Rock is a really brutal uh, mod. And so we saw on South Korea, a lot of times, uh, one person would have to tank the, the Hard Rock. Whereas on the US, you have Rectigon who can take the Hard Rock and pop off anyways and put up a, a top score in the lobby. And that's just invaluable. Yeah, I think that's one thing that's that goes like not it doesn't get talked about enough, right? Is like USA free mods when you have especially for these super late rounds, right? You have mm -hmm. Rectigon going hard rock and putting up ridiculous scores. You have Takeda going hidden and putting up good scores. Um and then you can just put Vaxay on Nomad and he's just gonna like go crazy um it's like an underrated aspect of of what makes this team so scary is that sort of especially on free mods um yeah directing on dude top three player this tournament easily with with emrec mm -hmm. and worst hr player yeah like dude played everything and was consistently like upper half upper quarter he he was really really nuts 
Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was really ridiculous for Rectigon, obviously, in Losers Finals, putting up a lot of really good scores. Um, Vaxi's full combo on Eels, for example, was also really, really good. And then for Australia, just to highlight some of their other players, um, I think Secret Box and CS2 played really, really well. Um, Zintex was coming in for a lot of maps. Sayo was coming in for a lot of maps in the Losers Bracket Finals. They all played... Um, Secret Box, Zintex, and Sayo all played six maps out of eight, so quite a lot of the maps for the team. Um, so I think there's a lot of promise for the team. And I think, honestly, a lot of this team did pretty well. You have your specialists, you have um, kind of your returning members who I think can look forward to another year next year. Um, but I think uh, Australia should see kind of a, a renewed focus on tournaments this year with how good their <laughs> OWC performance was. Um, I expect ANZT to be a lot more competitive this year. When it was already, we, uh, I mean, it was already yeah. competitive. They had like oh, yeah. grand finals week tiebreakers and stuff between some of these players who ended up being on the team. So Yeah. Um, just saying, I think there will probably be a little bit more interest in uh, trying to climb that tournament for a lot of people in the country. Also, they just announced before we move on, I know we're probably trying to go to the next match, but they did just announce like a new tournament that, that they're running that's uh, like an APAC region tournament, I think, where I guess the idea is that it's like Hippo Cup, where it's like super, super high skill cap pools. Um, so you, with ANZT already being pretty big and with like tournaments like that, I think you're going to see a super, super high skill cap push from some of these players who maybe fell off just a little bit in late rounds. So really yeah. uh, excited to see what they can continue to do, especially with teams ahead of them, like United States potentially losing more players again next year and uh, so on and so forth. You know, South Korea is going to probably lose people to military. Mm -hmm. So Australia 2024 early investment. Can you really? I mean, can you say investment when they already got top three this year? I guess not. But <laughs> yeah, uh, not really. <laughs> uh, I would. I would say. I would say it is feasible for them to uh, repeat this performance. Um, I think getting, so. getting at least as far again. All right, that'll move us on to uh, the match that everybody was talking about this weekend, which was the actual grand finals: United States versus South Korea. Um, this was a banger grand finals like we haven't seen in a pretty long time uh, i think the last time a grand finals was this close was when we saw germany tiebreaker versus the united states um but even then this was kind of next level close it was seven five seven six both in favor of the united states uh but it felt like these matches could have gone either way basically throughout the entirety of the match uh, the first match in Grand Finals was 7-5, and it was pretty much all decided based off a first pick breakpoint from South Korea. If they don't give that up, then we maybe see tiebreaker, we maybe see it go the other way. And then the second round, of course, was 7-6 with a uh, clutch up from the United States on the anti-mod free mod to secure tiebreaker. Yeah, it was such an incredible Grand Finals. I mean, we'll, we'll start with the first match. I, I have to say, it was like... Dio killed it on the cast. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it was it was so great. It was closer than the seven. It could have very easily gone to tiebreaker. I don't think you'd be much closer than seven five, it, brother. <laughs> it really couldn't. I mean, we could have tiebreaker. Exists, but, just, it know, was thirty nine thousand points it. on on I think it was the uh, the GT four thirty seven thousand points between uh, seven five and a tiebreaker. Obviously, Rectigon played incredibly well. Uh, I will say I don't agree with the DT2 ban from South Korea. Um, we saw them ban it in both matches. The first time they lost it by 700,000. Second time they lost it by 300,000. And the United States banned out that DT2 against Australia, right? Not to say the US can't play the DT2, I'm sure they can, mm -hmm. but they're clearly not so confident on the map, the map they're gonna put up a 3 million score if they're banning it against Australia. And I think that's just a much better chance of getting a break point uh, on the DT2 and having you know one of your speed players pop off and get lucky uh, as opposed to running the DT3 back. But uh, regardless, of course, worst HR player played insanely well. I The Hard Rock 3 full combo was probably the greatest uh, that's World the best Cup tournament. That's score like the of best, all time. One Maybe of the best just tournament the best tournament scores, tournament scores yeah, of all yeah. time. Yeah, that's Super easy. impressive yeah. stuff. And interestingly enough, I, I mean, I, I won't say the pool was super balanced, but in terms of skill set diversity, but it didn't actually favor either team, right? Like, it didn't feel like it was like super speed abusable against South Korea. It didn't have like way too much aim control to give South Korea the edge. And so it was balanced in a kind of roundabout way where neither team was really advantaged by, by the pool, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I think the the only map that really was an unfortunate sort of uh, unbalanced pick was like unironically the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker. And that, that yeah. discussion has obviously been done to death, but I mean, they they got <laughs> wow. <laughs> That, that has to have been Dada, right? That, that, was, that was indeed Dada. That um, was funny as hell. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, was a, it was a custom commission song by an acoustic artist or band that was that was commissioned, what, like six or something months ago. I mean, yeah. L, I, I don't know. It, it's unfortunate. Like, you know, and, and you talk about that, like South Korea, the only team in the list of contenders that was arguably not good at tapping and even then like they won the free mod too and they've been competitive on on fast dt picks i don't even know if that's really true they're like i guess less not good at not as good at stamina but whatever um but yeah i think this the obviously the pool ended up working out super well because this was one of the most competitive matches there's literally ever been i mean it was one map away from being the most competitive map you match you could ever have um and i don't know usa just like clutched up i guess what 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 more is there to say about like it, yeah like this is one of those matches that you just have to have seen and witnessed because yeah it was so incredibly close the entire way through and you never knew who was going to win until literally the second set went to tiebreaker and everybody was like damn i know what the, what's going to happen now and the usa yeah. just feels inevitable year in year out so there you are yeah i mean with with regard to the pool like we had average bpm concerns and we made some specific nerfs to specific maps to address them and it seemed like the pool was pretty balanced like we got seven five seven six i don't think it gets much closer than that like you said yep. um so i yeah the the pool the pool was balanced this is what we were saying from the map pool team side that like concerns about balance are very overblown uh in terms of skill set balancing this ended up being a very very close match both times um and when the skill levels of the teams are this close i think that's all you can really ask for um the tiebreaker of course sad for south korea but if they're winning the free mod too i don't even think it's that bad of a tiebreaker for them right like they put up the single best team score of the weekend on the free mod too um the whole reason they ended up losing this is they both the both of these teams traded tons of breakpoints early on. We saw uh, both teams' first picks go their way in the second round, with South Korea actually picking the DT4. They lost the previous set and winning it. Obviously, USA picking the DT3. Um, and then South Korea's second pick in Hidden 3 went to the United States. They won that by a pretty significant margin in the first set. South Korea did, excuse me. Um, USA's second pick in Nomad 4 that they won against South Korea previously went to South Korea this time around. South Korea's third pick, the Hidden 2, which they won previously against the U.S., went to the United States this time around. And then the United States' third pick in Free Mod 1, which they won by a landslide in the first round, went to South Korea in the second round because they low-rolled their scores. Um, and then I think we finally got some normal picks coming in near the end here. Uh, two in a row for South Korea on the Hard Rock 3 Free Mod 2. Uh, two in a row for the United States on Hard Rock 2, which South Korea won the previous set, uh, and Free Mod 4. And then just a couple of last picks traded back and forth. Um, hidden 1 for South Korea and Free Mod 3 for the United States. Um, this was the first pick from South Korea in the first set and the last pick for the United States in the bracket reset. And uh, it was actually just the clutch up from uh boshi man to secure a point in this one uh south korea got 1.85 million both times on this and uh if boshi man gets around 400k like everybody else in the lobby on this run then the united states loses and we crown a new champion um so the fact that he was able to get 770k on nomad is pretty much the entire reason they were able to win that pick and force the tiebreaker um and from there i think yeah tiebreaker definitely was a little usa favored but that's just how it goes sometimes um even if it's something like rpg i don't know how much more you favor south korea when there are players like rectigon vaxe on the side of the united states who are also really good at that style of tiebreaker anyway right and like i think you can put in takito if it's that style of tiebreaker i think you can put in kama if it's that style of tiebreaker so arguably you get more of the core roster for usa if it's a typical quote-unquote rhythm game tiebreaker anyway. osu core, osu yeah. core tiebreaker. yeah i mean exactly Ultimately, I think the problem with the tiebreaker for South Korea is that it was We're too fast for which it's our player, yeah. right? If you lower that by 20 BPM, leave the map, the I mean, obviously you can't have it the exact same, but 
but like if Worst the HR plays a similar style map, 20 BPM lower, all of a sudden it's an insanely close tiebreaker. You have more than just Karcher and you know, you have someone who can who has that high skill cap and can match the scores of someone like Vaxe or Rectigon. Uh, but I think the the picks being so unpredictable is part of what made it so exciting. Going to the second match, you would get a pick and you go, okay, well, we know how this goes. And uh, no, actually doesn't go that way anymore. Uh, there was so many breakpoints. 45% of the picks were breakpoints throughout the match, which was just absolutely absurd. They just could not win their own picks. Uh, and I also wanted to highlight Vaxe, who really stepped up, had the highest match cost uh, for the US in that second match, actually outperforming uh, Rectigon the second time around. But like uh, the US played Nomad, what was it, Nomad 4, the uh, the tech pick, three times. Vaxe had the top three scores on the map. Uh, and one thing I also want to call out that I don't think was talked about uh, a lot was the free mod strategy for South Korea. Into the second match, rather than leaving, um, worse or sorry, leaving, who was it? Who did they leave off? Um, was it Karcher or Worst HR? They put on Nomad in the second map match. Uh, for which map? Um, yeah, which map? They had they had Worst HR player Nomad on Necrofantasia. They had okay, yeah, Karcher Necro Nomad Fantasia. on Beam Cannon. Okay, it varied, but uh, I mean, uh, Worst HR player hidden on Eels. Yeah. But in the first match, right, they had Flying Tuna on the no mod with Worst HR Karcher taking the mods. But in the second match, they decided that wasn't sustainable, right? They put Flying Tuna on either the Hidden or the Hard Rock. Yes, Flying Tuna is going to get a bit of a lower score, but you let one of your big carry players in either Worst HR or Karcher try and put up a big score on the no mod. And I thought that was just really, really clever strategy. I think I always love to see teams that are able to adapt into second matches, especially when it's a bracket reset. Uh, and I just thought that was, even though it didn't, uh, it wasn't enough to make the difference in the end, I thought that was just a really clever bit of strategy from South Korea. I mean, that's just El Clasico. Like, <laughs> that's just the classic. Like, everyone a couple that. of years ago before 2020, that was standard free mod practice yeah. when the later rounds came about. You had somebody tank hidden hard rock and somebody run hidden who was comfortable with it and then put your two best players on no mod and just have uh, one player drop 100k and everybody else drop 900k. Like, that's well, US, just the, the strategy US, of all time. USA does still do that with Vaxay. Like, he does still traditionally play yeah. no mod on, the, on all the free mods and he puts up, like, stupid scores. So... That is like still something that gets done. Yeah. I wonder the difference there is Rectigon Taquito, right? Yeah, so. Rectigon and Taquito are just like in yeah. there. It's it's just not losing anything to have them on on Hard Rock and Hidden, respectively. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this match would have been different. Like, and I don't want to call anybody out because obviously everyone in this match played super well, but it felt like Flying Tuna kind of didn't have his best day. Like, some of the scores were not what you would expect of a player mm -hmm. of his caliber, and so I wonder if he's just that little tiny bit better, like that would have made the difference because some of these maps are super close and you know if he gets like a normal flying tuna score on on like you know eels for instance or or whatever like or if he gets you know a slightly higher score on xy map like maybe this goes the other way like he needs 500k on uh r176 and free mod in the last uh the second to last map of the entire match and they just win so it's like the little tiny things you know yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he he played. He definitely played well on some maps, but I I do agree on a lot of stuff that you would consider um, a couple of years ago to be flying tuna specialties. He wasn't looking how we would have expected him to a couple of years ago. Um, but I think I think ultimately it was just the scaling of the map pool, yeah. kind of like so, yeah. uh, when else has fly because twenty twenty one. I think like the most ridiculous scaling that we got was like in 4v4 perennial and in 1v1 like Corsair's closed and even that is like at least perennial 2021 was about the same difficulty as this like I don't think this actually this might be, this might have been harder This is a, um, I think this is this just is a like harder a pool even harder, than perennial yeah. 2021 yeah. yeah um and then I don't think I don't remember 2021 Corsair's closed super well. I seem to remember Flying hard, Tuna being somewhere in Corsair's closed 2021, but I, I don't think he literally. It. He literally uh, was in. I think he won that. Did he win it? Yeah, Actually, I think he won that. He was in Grand Finals against uh, Utami, and he won. Yeah, 
or Joel. He might have been. I forget. It was grand finals. It, I remember he. There was a match. I think against flying against Fancyland. I think there was a match against Utami, but he ended up winning. Oh yeah, no, he was. Uh, he was the winner for that yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely uh, misremembering some yeah, things. Yeah, Tuna's, uh, Tuna's, Tuna's super, super good. So like a couple of those scores were just a little surprising. Um, but yeah, you're right though. He might not have just he might not have played a pool that was white to this level. I think that closed pool might have been similarly difficult. But yeah, pretty it was much. Was also just two the years ago when he and he went to military in between and has been gone until like this past summer. And I don't think I don't know that he's necessarily like 100 percent picked up where he left off because. It's hard to do that when you've been out of the tournament scene for that long. Yeah, it really is. I mean, oh. the last thing I wanted to add yeah. is one of the big bright spots for me for South Korea was Allegrissimo. Um, Allegrissimo back in, but <laughs> ironically. True. Yeah, top score on the Nomad 1 in the first match had 700k on the, uh, I think it was the Hard Rock 1 uh, in that second match. Uh, or sorry, it was yes, top scored the uh free mod three again in that first match, and that very last map, right? That free mod three was the one them uh popped off like in those last two maps on the uh the free mod three and the free mod four to keep them in it and uh was their third best player on the day, and so that's really exciting for South Korea, assuming Allegrissimo is going to back be back next year. Yeah, like the fact that the the meme is actually no longer put Allegrissimo back in. The meme is just now keep Allegrissimo in. Yeah, just because <laughs> he's just that good. The guy is. I I don't know what happened between last year when there were moments where he felt like a liability to this year when, like you said, he was a top three player for them. Um, but dude, definitely took a step up this year. It was super impressive. Also, I mean, I think a, they, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I I was gonna say I think a lot of it is the meme of just South Korea playing every international tournament as a country instead, right? Because Allegrisimo gets so much tournament practice playing with the other Koreans around the entire year, right? Like, I think was on the Corsace Ace Open team this year that got second place. So this was a, like, I don't know, this is somebody who has been playing a lot of tournaments with other Koreans and has had, yeah, was on the Corsace Ace Open this, team that, this year that got second place. Um played three-digit World Cup with the South Koreans and won three-digit World Cup 2023. Um, so this is somebody who is kind of on the grind with the rest of South Korea for the players that need to be on the grind, so to speak, right? Um, like, you don't see a lot of times Karcher or Worst HR player on these sorts of teams. You see the rest of the roster on these teams instead. Yeah, it's interesting how they go that route for like the big international 4v4s outside of world cups where it's like we're going to use our OWC roster it's kind of kind of cool to see though it is. it's yeah, worked I mean, out for them it's worked out for them two years yeah. in a row right like they did the same thing last year in Corsace as they did this year yeah i'll be interested to see if they can do a similar thing next year if they don't have a player like Karcher and if they'll have anyone to kind of step up and fill that uh secondary carry spot i <laughs> I think I kind of think this year had to be their year because I think, I think so if, they, if they're losing yeah. if they're losing Karcher, yeah, to finally hit. military after however many times he's delayed it due to getting COVID, um, and I I don't know if there's anybody else they're gonna lose from this team, but that's I mean been one of their top two players for two for the last what three years now, yeah. Um, so yeah. I don't know that that's really replaceable in. I like I should you know I say that as we look at a USA team that turned over five members this year, four members last year, four members the year before that. Um, that South Korea won't be able to survive without one player, um, but I think they have more depth than they have kind of that top heaviness, where their depth pieces are really good, but they need to have Karcher worst HR player um, or people at that level. So yeah, it's gonna be a big question mark next year. And I think also the. One indication of that is Spectre being on the roster and, and the fact that Spectre. Weeks. Yeah. yeah, Spectre didn't play a map in semifinals, finals, or grand finals. So I think if you're losing Karcher, that's now a big question mark. Because if one of your top two members is going away and you have trouble filling an eighth that can be, you know, good enough to scale up to grand finals, then how do you expect to do that without Karcher next year? So, um, kind of agree this was probably south korea's chance at it um doomsday fanboy is coming back 
we will see Doomsday Fanboy come back, but maybe they get no KJK um, on next year, which is a completely different skill yeah. set than Karcher, but it would still have been <laughs> but it would still I, be good. I yeah. think I think Note probably would have played at least a couple maps in these grand finals. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, well, I think Spectre, I mean, the last thing a lot, I think, I think Spectre kind of highlights one of the potential issues with how um, South Korea does their tryouts. Like, my understanding is that yeah. they run tryouts and they just take the top eight, right? No questions asked. If you get top eight in, in tryouts, you're you're on the team. Um, and... I will correct that a oh, yeah. bit. It's not quite like that. Okay. I know if you get top four, you're just top on the team, okay. and then they build the rest of the roster around that. Oh, okay. All right. No, never mind then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah their, so. their their roster construction I think is a little bit unique, but I mean mm. obviously it works out like they were they were two hundred K score away from winning the entire thing. I don't know who stops the USA going forward now though. They've proven that they can win with with know. a roster that like would had more question marks around it than I don't remember the last time USA roster had this many question marks about it. Um and I mean obviously it was a strong team on paper to begin with, but I think people were still like super doubt even though well, I don't know. I picked them to win, but yeah. Um I am curious to see who USA keeps and loses for next year because it seems like that's been the case like every year they're just losing people and turning over like I'm almost sure that Vaxa is going to be gone next year just knowing Vaxa like, yeah. he won't he won't be back. I don't know who of the rest of them will be playing and not playing yeah. but hey man if they get if they just keep having Boshi man improve to become the best player in the world <laughs> you know he'll just carry it next yeah. year. Dude that that was it what Fremont three yeah the, <laughs> the second last time mod score like, man, the clutch up man yeah. clutch up holy yeah thing. i mean they have decayton that can come in next year too yeah and it's, with uh, uh with vaxa gone the all-rounder spot is open again so i don't see any reason they would not take him for next year no he's so good they're gonna be just as good next year and uh we'll see if anyone can stop the usa dominance at some point you know maybe it'll be three years from now but one day surely Surely Someone one day. Oh, no, USA, USA is USA is actually just uh, the the Japan Taiko of standard. Uh, not quite yet. They need no. ten in a row for that. Yeah, they need. They need like, <laughs> also, they need to not go to uh, seven five seven six bracket reset grand finals because if this was Japan Taiko, they would have lost like one map the entire tournament for the last three years yeah. straight. So, yeah. You know, not quite on that level yet, but yeah. USA not throwing the early rounds. I don't I don't see it happening. USA needs to, uh, <laughs> they, they need to not do whatever happened in quarterfinals. I, I still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if, All or, right. yeah, I don't know. It should be fun. Yeah. All right. So we're going to transition now into the campfire segment. We're going to talk with some of the uh, OWC staff members who have been here throughout the tournament, uh, including a couple of people from the map pool team, uh, some other commentators, referee, and uh, go ahead and just take a kind of perspective look back at the whole tournament. So happy to introduce as we switch scenes here to a nine person we have a whole scene. Bunch of people. Let's go. We have, we have quite a lot of people here. Uh, Bracket K, Chiv, Dada, Fire Your Rage, Miles, and Vordy. Hello, all. As we wait on, uh, as we wait on Cavo to switch scene, streamer. Hello. There we go. Oh my Hello. god. Hello. Hello. There we go. Hello oh my everyone. god. Wait, where's Miles? No. Where's the Miles? My cam is on. My cam is on. Where's Miles? Um, it's ruined. I am here. It's ruined. He's he, he's here, but he's quite quiet, and he has no cam. And oh, what hell? You guys watch the the grand finals vod while we're doing this. In in lieu of having yeah. South Park and Subway Surfers, you get to watch the OWC grand finals. What vod. is going on on Dada's stream? <laughs> He has a Does skull. He, he has a skull. He, he has a skull. He, it's the curse of raw, dude. Curse of, the raw. Curse of raw. I see. It's it's, it's a raw. curse of raw to yeah, anyone calling go. the grand finals map pool unbalanced. <laughs> All right, so let's thank you, Dio, for introducing us. But um, it's genuinely a workout, by the way, to hold up. And uh, we're gonna introduce our roles in OWC. So for those who don't know me, I'm Kay, and I'm a referee for the World Cups, and. I'm sure you, the DOT, when G and I flame have already introduced, introduced themselves. I was also a playtester this year. Hey guys! Oh, oh. right, <laughs> playtester Dio. Yeah. So you are on a Dada, gonna, and we just go in order. Gonna, yeah, go we go in order. Dada. Is it me now? I thought T one G was gonna introduce himself. No, she, no, uh, we, they already know who we are. <laughs> okay, uh, we, we've been here. I was one of the many map pullers we had this year, and uh, I was the guy who talked some shit on Twitter sometimes, occasionally. Oh yeah, no, I'm Vordy. I was a commentator for this year's my first OWC commentating. I think this was my first year of international casting. I think 2022, I started commentating like just a few Aussie tournaments. Um, but I was very, very, very thankful to have the opportunity to cast OWC, and it was a 
absolute blast. Fiery? Fiery. Hello? Fiery. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, oh hey played. guys, I played. <laughs> um, I was also a commentator for a bit of the early rounds. I didn't really get to commentate that many times in the late stages just because I was playing the tournament. So uh, I didn't really get to play grand finals. I talked a lot. Hi, that's me. <laughs> hey, that's him. Hi, I'm Kevin with Shiv. Um, people already know I did uh, map pool direction with a lot of the other map pools this year. It's my first year pulling OWC, so I was really happy. Um, we got a lot of ideas down, and um, I think we laid out a lot of groundwork for next year. But people already know I've been working pretty decently hard behind the scenes, even right now as well, to lay out more groundwork for next year, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, hey guys, I'm Miles, uh, second year commentator, second year on the map pooling team, except this time I'm an actual pooler instead of a playtester. And uh, yeah, just a gradual, gradual rise, been trying to get these roles for some years now, so really thankful to be here. All right. All right. So this is like a, this is like an open campfire discussion where we're like, looking back on OWC as a, as a collective, but I kind of want to, um, at least shed some light on the you know before the tournament before registrations even start with Dada, Chiv, and Miles on the map pooling part because I heard that you know you guys start a whole year in advance with all of these like featured artists uh bookings and you know getting play testers in and, and yada yada so I I'm like I'm personally curious on like what that's like yeah, you guys had like a super lot of osu originals this time around i was kind of surprised about that 20 in total i think right mm -hmm. Me too. i was also surprised about that <laughs> even the poolers are <laughs> surprised about that okay yeah. god oh bless god. mango miser by yeah, the way we, we weren't supposed to get like three or four of them they just happened like um azer contacted his friends uh i contacted matrix like we we had some so many like, like Originals that weren't supposed to happen, but did because we just thought like, hey, this this could be cool, right? But yeah, that work is literally like, as soon as OWC ends, it's like we we contact Mango Miser, Mango Miser makes a list, he contacts the featured artists, and like with that whole shebang. Like what ends up happening is we have to keep in mind like budget, we have to keep in mind time frame. Like there's some artists that are booked until like 2027. There's some stupid stuff like that. There's some artists that have labels so they can't really work with us with releases and stuff because it has to go through the label. And like that whole stuff just makes originals like need so much of so, so much planning that it has to start like really, really, really early on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's almost too many originals, as cool as they are. Uh, it made the pools really hard to to balance when you have like all the originals planned out that far in advance, and you just kind of have to slot in uh, things around the originals, which you can't really change, which is pretty apparent in like um, semis finals. And, and finals especially. Semis, hidden three, the custom song <laughs> was just not made to be the difficulty that it was. Like, remember yeah. that Fergus map? It was actually oh, right. meant to be in free mod, but it ended up just being way too easy on uh, Nomad and Hard Rock. So we decided that, yeah. I think, did we decide to lower the AR and then move it to hidden to be more of a density speed check? I think that's I, what I we did. I think it just yeah. got moved to hidden. It I don't remember moved. lowering the AR. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, on the other end of the spectrum, we also had people like Down who asked to make uh, their own songs for the tiebreaker and then just pumped out that QF tiebreaker in like, a week did he make that song in? Three days? Yeah. I don't Next remember year, quite the every pool needs for the that. actual song. Yeah. But yeah, like I think that concern was like it was only really apparent in Grand Finals where he shoved like seven or eight originals. Which was yeah. like that was the only pool where it ended up being such a hassle to actually balance it that we had to put in like DJ Mag and other stuff because it, there's just like not maps that existed. I mean, so we, to be fair, I think I think we ended up a really good job at the grand finals. Yeah, um, like, especially compared to finals that had some issues with the originals. GF was like outside of the tiebreaker matchup for South Korea was like a really really good pool. I think it had 
like perfect amount of tapping gimmick all mechanics which is really nice to see it was well done for sure and it made for some very good matches dude, yeah we, dude <laughs> you guys i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie dude you guys kind of popped off with the map well so also surprised to see like the difference in format because it's not like a traditional thing right but i think that was a kind of the the shocker right of like oh my god we're abandoning slot pool i saw a lot of twitter <laughs> twitter beef and then i saw map pool feedback in the owc server and i was like oh shit dude my favorite part of owc this year was kevin pvping on twitter with random people saying the pool sucked that was my favorite part of the world cup this my year. favorite yeah. part that was funny as hell collective <laughs> brain cells of freedom dive blue zenith hard rock and scarlet rose dt the collective brain cells in those pooling chats were <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. No, dude, I just love I couldn't believe how pot wait, can I can I say this on stream? But thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the feedback. Steam Yo, happy. Oh my god, that was so wholesome about the same Curtis time. I was like I like how like Chib and Dada were literally like Jekyll and Hyde in that in that pooling feedback. <laughs> the good cop, bad cop routine them. and yeah, that pool feedback. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did that just um, naturally happen, or did you guys talk about it? It just not. It's just not pers That's how the personalities work between <laughs> me and Dada. Um, I guess I can talk about my perspective since I think I have a really unique like situation what happened on the VC this year. So like people already know that I've been map pulling for maybe like oh, just a bit over two years now, but I was like doing like a lot of heavy work in community tournaments. Like I think at some point, um, I hit maybe like seven or eight tournaments at once. I was map pulling for. It was a lot of like enjoyment. Like I just like besides like. Like doing all my IR stuff when I come home, it's like besides playing games, like I was just like map pulling. So pretty much it was really enjoyable. And then for OWC this year, I wasn't even supposed to be on the team. So I joined the team late April. And what happened was uh two players that originally were supposed to pull, uh Bartek and Mitchney, were actually supposed to be pullers. And they wanted to play instead. And I think um Aza played one of my pullers from SFS and he's like, This guy's actually pretty sick of pulling, like let's get him on the team instead. Cause those guys left, so I joined afterwards. And it was pretty fun, but I think I encountered a lot of problems that um, I realized uh, were really struggling for me at the start and any new pull up really, because joining in was like almost like a completely new world with so many more customs to manage. And this whole idea of custom songs, like one of the biggest problems this year was like TB song was like, like that is like a song gap, you know, it's like there's, you're not making a 220 BPM like metal song any more tech favorite. Like it is just going to be like what it is right now. So when the song already drops, and people are like, you know, this is already going to be a stream topic for sure. Like, it's really hard to, you know, bend around that. But that was just one of the many issues we encountered this year, I think. Um, and especially for me personally, one of the biggest things I realized that was uh, problematic was I felt like the structure internally in the map pulling team was really weak. So I decided to step up this year and really push for a lot of reform. And even for next year as well, I've been planning things already, including more discussions amongst players of map pullers as well as uh, a lot more map pulling discussion within uh, new team roles as well to be implemented next year so the overall process is a lot more strong and a lot more clear cut so we'll see how those things both go i think miles can talk about it as well mm -hmm. yeah i i have a bit of a unique experience as well because unlike chiv actually azer asked me in january to join but i wasn't sure because like yeah like that's like all the year down the road so like i'm not gonna know like if i want to do it again i'll just play test and join in like august again except i joined in august and somehow became a pooler which was kind of a bit late to the party compared to all the other poolers but yeah what chiv said about the structure was right like kind of the way it worked this year was like the hierarchy was like dada and chiv like kind of everything went through them and then the rest of the poolers we kind of like did stuff as asked so the goal going forward would be for all of the selectors to really be able to like, I guess, move on their own without like having to like consult like the owners of the vision, I guess is one way to say it. Yeah, but I think I completely agree. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly like I said, like um, when for next year, even if we have so many people on the selection team, one thing I think people are going to be surprised to hear is that this year's selection team is probably one of the first years where everyone on the team is most likely staying. And that is mainly because two things. Firstly, everyone is motivated enough and really enjoy working in the space provided. And B, everyone really thinks that they have a lot of things to prove for next year. And like when you look at the staff team, it's like um, 
probably some of the most like talented map pullers like in the scene. Obviously, you have Dada who's been pulling for God knows how long. This guy is so old, dude. Like, oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, he's sick. He's got Bro, just threw some shade. Like, he's seen it all. Like this guy, really this guy pulls. Yeah, he basically started like slot pulling or was one of the original people behind it, and he's now trying to take it out, which is kind of funny. Um, but of course, I think. Uh, people gave him not enough uh, credit this year for, you know, always being willing to try this new map pulling stuff. But I think next year is really going to see some of the other members shine, especially Miles, who, you know, he talked about how this year was hard for him to fit in because he was kind of thrown in last minute. I mean, he just got promoted from playtested because of activity. But he's the person who has been pulling for Corsair's clothes and multiple community tournaments, like for around the same time as I have now. And another person that I think people are really going to be excited for next year is Yui or Megamic. I think that he really didn't have that much time to shine this year because of time zone issues and just overall direction in terms of communication with him was really weak. But if people have played his tournaments before or pools, they know that guy is probably some of, like when I say him and Dada are two sides of the same coin, like they are definitely two sides of the same coin. Like these guys are very similar poolers, but very different as well. Like they have some very interesting ideas that both of them are very confident executing. I feel like having both of them on the team next year will be really good. We'll see. Matthew no more Azer, though. Went. God bless. No more Azer. Oh my God. We need to get him. <laughs> we can oh. put him. God. Yeah, get this Azer guy out of here, oh man. God. Like, oh, finally. That's so toxic. He's not. Are you guys being toxic for no reason? What the fuck is he still doing here? Oh my uh, God. Is, like, uh, as I said, Azer is still on the team next year. Um, as more on Team of Canada, of course. Oh, yeah, as, on as Team Canada. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, some things I wanted to mention when you guys are talking about teams. I'm going to do some early leaks right now just because I enjoy talking about stuff. But firstly, for Team Canada, it's going through a bit of implosion. A lot of players are not going to be playing next year, mainly because they believe that, like, this is going to sound really cope, but, like, they think that this year is the best chance to have top three because the bracket luck was really high. I mean, they beat Germany and they beat USA, so, f like, real like realistically, like, I would 100% agree. So they feel like um, as skill cap ever increases and, you know, Canada's traditional, like, worst thing is skill cap, um, yeah. They just feel like a lot of the players, um, namely Ryan or, uh, namely Ryan, Yip, and Curtis will not be playing next year, um, in favor of bringing new blood into the tournament scene. So yeah, we'll be seeing Lily and Jay stick it around, but we'll probably be seeing some familiar faces. People already know Sari, who played last year and test played this year, is probably going to make a reappearance. And same with Maple Cup winner Vinopoly. On the yeah. flip side, goat. Vinopoly is um, so good. Can they can they get yes. uh, can they get spicy, please? Yeah, TS Fury uh, spicy when? Like, oh, TS Fury is very like spicy mechanics, I think it's an like, extremely high good. chance. Yeah, spicy needs a lot more time and like his tournament stability is really weak. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, TS Fury has a very high chance. He does. He's have got a year, year in yeah. Canada. Surely, has, like, surely if he uh, surely if he teams with Jay in every tournament through the year, he just exactly. gets in. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jay has like, also announced on Twitter he's coming back to tournaments. He's back. So like, I'm surprised to see that the grinder has that. They really needed that. I got one more in me. I got one more oh, year in me. He had this whole master, this master storyline of I'm gonna fucking quit after OWC, or like the only thing that I'm playing is OWC from now on. And then he came back and I'm just like, like actually, I'm guys, <laughs> the flame is reignited. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, no, I feel like for Jay, like his 2021 was like insane. It was. Yeah, it and was then 2022, he was like a little inconsistent, and same with I think this year. So him coming back to the grind like in 2021, like that's going to do a lot of good stuff for Canada. For sure. It might be rough next year for Canada, but it's going to be nice to see some some rookies. There's a lot of like new up and coming players for yeah. Canada that are really like good. So it'll be so good to see them. Circle next year. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Canada's while while we're still on the year. on the topic of map pools, vaguely, by the way. Um, one thing I did want to talk about while we're all here is the like custom percentage this year because yeah. it was really high. And I don't know if uh, the map pullers Too here high. actually want to talk about that and plans for next year um, or not. But yeah, yeah I'll leave you. it to uh, I'll leave it to you guys because I'm still a uh, play tester right now. So I don't have like direction, say, in that kind of stuff. But from my perspective, it was uh, oh, quite do. the high custom <laughs> percentage, especially in grand finals where we had three out of 20 maps that were not yeah. custom just pre-existing <laughs> maps only three of them might as well so... just call it course ace world cup wow i'd rather die um... <laughs> wow. <laughs> we are on by the way wow the course ace <laughs> open world <laughs> cup let's oh go oh my <laughs> god anyway like we 
ended up realizing that the actual percentage of customs just overall as Dio takes a whip of his Benjamin. Thank you. Uh, the percentage of customs was, was way too high. Like, we accepted mappers, like, we accepted too many mappers, for one. We let those mappers do more stuff than just one map, which is, like, one of the compounding problems is that you accept mappers, and then you accept more of their stuff, and all of a sudden, you have more customs than you planned for. And we distributed those customs in a way to make, like, the end pulls of Nightmare to Balance because we had very few slots that we could actually even, like, change at all. We had a hard time nerfing the slots. A lot of maps were just... They were shoved into Grand Finals as, like, wow, this map is too hard for semis or too hard for finals. Like, we ended up postponing those slots, we were postponing those customs to a harder stage, and it just ended up being very, like, there was way too many customs and way more than we intended for. So we are taking, I want to say drastic measures, but I know that sounds like worse than it is, where we're trying to cut the customs, uh, obviously not entirely, but we're trying to really take a step back and, like, probably just reduce the customs by, like, half. Right? So... If you're one of the custom haters, which they exist, and they're uh, apparently like this, one of the main problems with people uh, like playing tournaments is like, oh, this is a custom map, therefore it must not be good, because that that's already like a stigma that people have associated with that kind of map. Then, like, if you're one of those people, like, that's something we want to address, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I completely agree. Um, that's one of the things that we'll be directly addressing next year. Is I'm in like my PR voice right now, you know, like, uh, so we'll be looking at the number of customs and how many mappers we accept. Um, it's really sad because, like, you know, like at the end of the day, like one group of people will lose, whether it's the players who are like frustrated, whether it's the viewers that don't want to watch so many customs, whether it's the mappers, you know, that's goals to map for OWC because that's very like. Just like how any player, like this is gonna sound really bad, but like just like any player's goal is to play for WC, obviously for tournament players, like um, it's the same that applies for most staff roles. Like a lot of mappers aspire just to be OWC map pullers at the end of the day. Uh, a lot of map pullers aspire, same with refs even, and commentators, like it's the most prestigious tournament in the game. So to cut down on so many mappers next year, it's gonna be really harsh for new people who really wanna shine. But I think it's also just gonna make the role that much more like highly valued. So it's hard to say. And we'll be doing some different things with customs because, like, uh, there are customs, you know, in this tournament that were, like, super good, you know, easily, like, the down Gizan tiebreaker or, like, uh, like uh, fucking Friday by Melon Boy. Like, there's some customs you immediately remember. And that's the goal of us next year is, like, making these pulls as memorable and enjoyable as possible. I know it's a really hard goal, but I think this team can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing, oh, sorry to interrupt, there's nothing more memorable that we saw this year. Something that I missed as like a more early OWC viewer back in like 2015 is that for a bunch of years with the custom meta, there really weren't hype maps in the pool. And that's something that we really took steps to change this year. Like we had some extremely memorable pools, like who isn't going to get hype for Freedom Dive, Blue Zenith and freaking Scarlet Rose DT, like... But yeah, like it's it's sad that we have to cut down on so many customs, but like there's pros and cons to it. Like it gives us poolers a lot more control of the overall direction of the pool to make the experience better for players. And I think if mappers only have to focus on like one map, which I think is probably the main measure we're going to take, limiting mappers to one map, like roughly speaking, like maybe you make that line a little bit softer, like say if we need someone to like make something in an emergency, but like doing that should i think make pools more memorable because we just have more control to do what we want i will say uh it's definitely harder to control the pool direction overall i did i did the math it was uh 69 custom maps this year Ooh. um so nice yeah that size. nice yeah. um definitely makes it a lot harder to control pool direction as miles was saying so i think i think cutting down 
even even like 50 percent, you just have way more control um especially when a lot of those customs end up being in the later rounds right um the early rounds have significantly fewer customs than the later rounds of the tournament did i completely agree um i think if nobody else had anything on pooling uh i wanted to ask what the highlight uh, of everyone's owc was i guess we can start with k in the top corner Ooh. What was a highlight? I mean, for me personally, it was it was refing the show match. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's such a really arbitrary thing because I know grand finals didn't have a show match, but finals did. So, like, my personal highlight was um, refing finals and then just having really good fun with it. Like, I was goofing around with the players, and then on the last tiebreaker, who was it? Inner camping and. Mashtas switch teams and the entire team <laughs> went head rock. And then I didn't even give a shit. I was like, you know what? It's it's a show match. We're here for shits and giggles. We're here to showcase crap. Just fucking go. Um Azer says Kane repping. You know what? That's the only thing I can do. Give me a break. Let me take my my small dub. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you do it well, so thank you, thank you. But yeah, I think that was it's it's nice seeing people have fun on such a hard pool, especially players that don't have the opportunity to play those maps. Like Lou Kreese, for example, like Romania didn't make it to top six, unfortunately. He wasn't able to play those kinds of maps. Um, Mashdaz also didn't make it to top six. He wasn't able to play those maps. So to see them finally play something of that caliber was really, really nice. Um, when you said... Yeah, that to see players have fun on harder pulls, I just instinctively flash back to, to Chris getting off 100k on on the free much <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! No. Highlight, highlight of my OWC dur during the tournament was when I got my one replay the whole tournament on fucking Friday. That map was goaded. My single replay the entire tournament was on that map. It was pretty good. Um. But, but then obviously the the be, being able to cast grands uh this was my third year as a world cup caster uh my first year i got given the color caster of the year award and then wasn't put on grands <laughs> after the i got losers bracket finals instead um and then of course last year i was moving countries so i just wasn't casting all that much during the world cup last year i, I don't even remember much about the later rounds um so this year actually getting to cast it for the first time was really really cool speaking of awards um sorry to intervene in the middle point but this is a good topic actually quickly are we gonna host awards before the final match again next year like does anybody know like um I, that's all under all, all up to discussion I that's think. chillier it's yeah it's chillier <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know that's, that's, that's a that's an organizer question yeah. Honestly, yeah. it's like it's like awkward because it feels like you want the last stream of the tournament to be the grand finals because like instantly people just no longer care about OWC like the minute the last match ends. Um, so having it before for like viewership purposes and everything, but at the same time, yeah. like doing awards before the grand final happens is like. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like during tiebreaker, we had like 20k live viewers. As soon as it ended, I like instantly dropped to 10k, and we were at yeah. like 7k by the time the stream ended. Like yeah. far fewer people care uh, after after the match ends. Um, I do think it would be cool to be able to get full tournament stats specifically for yeah. player awards, though. Um, because I mean, it is the most important match of the tournament, and player awards, I feel like, are harder to give out beforehand like the the approach that we took this year specifically because we knew basically no matter what we did there was going to be some kind of backlash and people saying like oh this is the wrong decision whatever um is we literally just looked at statistics and overall contribution to team for pretty much all of the player-based awards that we gave out so whether that was rookie of the year or player of the year or veteran of the year or whatever right um we took actually just the pure statistics looked at match cost looked at maps played looked at percentage map played looked at mvps for the team looked at all that kind of stuff before we gave out any of those awards um but obviously we're still missing the context from grand finals right like there's only so much we can look at before the very last match of the tournament um so i think i don't know i don't know if grand finals would have changed any other awards, maybe player of the year to Rectigon instead. 
Um, Maybe. Really? I mean, but player like, of the, like I think the I think the like consensus of, among people I've spoken to about it seems to be that any of Rectigon, worst HR player, or MREC having been player of the year, they would have been. It seems like people would have been more or less fine with. But putting somebody in who didn't play finals pool, didn't play grand finals pool, was like a little bit. I think the part yeah. that people were questioning. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot to consider for next year. There's no like perfect uh, solution, but. But we'll definitely look at all the options and, and figure out what the, the best one is before doing the, the awards next year. Anyways, back on topic, we're going to go to your favorite highlights? moment of OWC. <laughs> we said. I already said that. Aaron, sorry, no, no, your deal, turn. Sorry, T1G, uh, Aaron, if you could go. I don't really have a personal one because, like, unfortunately, I got very few matches this year and none of them were particularly great like it just is what it is that's just luck of the draw like a lot of the matches i ended up casting were super one-sided um but i think the the coolest thing about this OWC for me was probably australia uh coming in with five complete OWC rookies who have never played in a, a world cup before uh six new members of their team this year if you count the fact that box didn't play last year and then getting their country's first ever top three um i think for me is the, the the coolest like aspect of this world cup because it was such an awesome story to follow as they just kept on winning matches um very, so very... Aus australia beating canada in semifinals then because that secured them the top three true i mean i guess but i'm not like holding it to just one match like i think yeah, yeah, yeah. i think the yeah. entire storyline is what was cool um, QF was cooler, arguably. Any, it wasn't just any one match out of those. It was just like that entire run. Yeah. I think for me, my highlight during the tournament was definitely watching Cup Paper dismantle the US. That was just... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate this that. guy. Uh, he's, he's on the desk with the USA I'm play. He's like, yeah, my favorite too. moment was when Cup Paper uh, slapped that ass in quarterfinals and beat the United States. That was my favorite. You didn't, you didn't hear anything. <laughs> I'm still upset about Nomad 2, man. That should have been our point. Yeah. No, you got wounding, right, Perry? <laughs> Other than that, it was obviously oh, same God. with Dio commentating grand finals. That match was so insane. Like one of the best matches of, well, probably the best match of the whole World Cup. I mean, it's my first year doing OWC. And, and just a year and a half ago, I was commentating six digit with Shiba. Like, fun fact, I actually commentated Shiba's first ever tournament match a year and a half ago. And now, like, doing grand finals with uh, him and Dio was just like, that's I mean, so when crazy. it takes me it... three years to get on the <laughs> OWC casting team, and then another three Here years to actually salt. cast Here comes the salt. Yeah, I'm still salty. <laughs> I will. I will still. I will be salty forever. Anyway, Dada. Hey, man. But but yeah, hey. no. Honestly, it, it still doesn't feel real. It was it was a lot of fun, and I will. I'll, I'll leave it to Dada. No, I'm. Listen, being Canadian, seeing Canada finally triumph over the U.S. and like the first time in like a hundred, two hundred years. Is, uh, is pretty nice. I will be You're Canadian? I flame? Yeah, I flame is Canadian. Oh. Yeah. We thought we, we thought you were talking about yourself, no, bro. No, I thought so too. Question mark a little bit. I was like, I know this guy's sorry, not Canadian. Sorry, What's he I'm saying? Not, right I'm not Canadian, guys. I'm not Canadian. He's from Maryland. Everyone really? on the episode is yes. actually Canadian. This is a LARPs? Canadian podcast. Yeah, I LARP. I Dada LARP LARPs as a Maryland sports fan. Yeah. So Fire Rage uh, is playing for Canada next year? Oh my god. I mean, sure. If the <laughs> slots open up, fly change is right there, buddy. True. I mean, the the favorite moment I had in the Zelda BC. If I had to really like <laughs> Honestly, I I'll give this moment like a really like a meme edge because it was it generally was the moment that made me the most happy in the Zelda BC, like entirely was number 32, Kazakhstan. The <laughs> Kazakhstan oh qualifying. God. And then, uh, like, actually playing it. really, really well. Yeah, yeah no, they, they did. They good. They did actually really they good. They looked good. Took to Panda like, TB, right? Uh, Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. They did. Like, Both their they, matches they went the tiebreaker. Really no, no, no. They got 5 0 in the first round. Yeah, they did oh, not take Korea oh, to tiebreaker. That oh, would yeah, be crazy. No, no, yeah, no, no they played South Korea first round, bro. No, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I th I might I think I was thinking of Ukraine. Ukraine took both teams to tiebreaker that they played, right? Um, they played, they played more than more two than teams. Than I don't two. remember which matches they had that went to tiebreaker, though. I know Japan. Japan went went to tiebreaker. 
Yeah, that sure. was against uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, Thailand. Both of their matches went to Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Th that's probably who I was Ukraine? thinking of. Yeah. Did Ukraine not play against Japan? No, Ukraine did not play against Japan, no. No? You're thinking oh, yeah, of I'm Kazakhstan. Not. I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. New Zealand as well. That, that was another one that I was thinking of. Thank you for that. Um... Yeah, New Zealand went four five four five, which is very that, that sad. was so unlucky. Um, and then Thailand, I think, also actually got blown out first round, but they won tiebreaker against New Zealand, and then I think lost tiebreaker in their next match. I don't remember exactly. It was a long tournament. I'm gonna I don't think double they lost check tiebreaker that. again, but I do yeah. think they beat New Zealand. They in won in tiebreaker against New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. That and then lost to Ukraine. Disconnecting, and then I've seen them out. I remember watching that live. That was crazy. He, everyone thought he disconnected, and then the map was almost over, and he starts playing again from the first third, and then he FCs the whole thing with it. And oh, my he God. He came back from the dead. <laughs> yeah. The best part is it didn't even matter, I think. Yeah, like, it didn't. Uh, they, they just should stop the tiebreaker so hard with QFCs that even if he had the score that he left off, I think it would have been enough. Mm-hmm. Japan actually also had two tiebreaker matches. They lost tiebreaker against China and then one tiebreaker against Kazakhstan before losing to Germany 6 4. Um... Vordy. Oh, Vordy. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, so I'll talk about the specific moment in a bit, but like the whole Australia team this year was so awesome to cheer for them, especially because going into uh, casting tourneys, like I only did a few Australia tourneys. And at that point, I had knowledge of every single player. I had played with some of the players, like O Slash and JGLF in 4WC. Um, I, I was friends with a good amount of the players. Like, I had all of the bias in the world to wish the best for them. But at the same time, like, before qualities even happened, I genuinely thought they were a top four team uh, alongside USA, South Korea, and then Poland. Um, and I think part of that is like knowledge bias. Like I have all of the knowledge of the Australian players, but not the same level of knowledge as the other teams. Um, but the fact that they really like showed and obviously the match that was my favorite moment was Australia Poland because that was their first real like tough matchup. And I don't really count Chile as a tough matchup. I thought that was going to be Freela for Australia and it was. And I think uh, some people, you know, maybe uh, overrated Chile a little bit, but uh, in that match, uh, I won't, won't call any names. Uh, but yeah, Australia Poland was their first like real like this is a team that most people think Australia should not beat. It was five point eight percent on Australia for pickums. Like the amount of doubters, the amount of Poland believers was insane, and just winning the match in such a cinematic moment. They were up five two, lost three picks in a row, and then it's just Emrek clutching up on. Probably my favorite tiebreaker in the pool, I want to say. Actually, no, grand finals might might be even more of a banger, but uh, it's also unplayable. I'm I'm too skill gapped, um, unfortunately. But uh, an awesome tiebreaker. Emrek clutching up at the end to close it out by like 70k. Um, obviously, also getting the opportunity to, to cast that on the Mavs was just like perfect. At that point, I would have already been satisfied. But then, you know, having them beat up, beat beat out Canada and get top three was even uh, the, the cherry on top. But yeah, I think that Australia Poland match, Amrek doing Amrek things in that tiebreaker was that was my favorite moment easily. Yo, uh, my favorite. Was I, was I the one who was Chileing in, in the predictions for that? <laughs> by the way, Dang I don't mean. even remember, man. I, I, like, I always love Chile. Do you? I remember being like, dude, I remember cinema. doubting Chile this year. What dude, do you mean? Dude, I got burned I remember, in twenty twenty one so I, I bad. I'm never, like, I'm never faithing again. <laughs> I expected like 5 0 to Australian predictions on that stream. And then there was like, I think there, I want to say there was at least two, maybe three Chile votes. And I was like, what the hell? I know Matthew Camping is correct, but like, you guys don't know what's coming. You just don't know. I'll be honest, I was a Chile believer this year because they did so well in 4WC with some of those players that were stepping up from 4Digit into their team, like No37 and Gonza. Like, they I actually they ended were... up carrying a lot of those maps too. Yeah, like those, no, those yeah. new players. TFGE as well, top scoring a tiebreaker, I think, late in loser's bracket, like, saving them in a match, like, that was nuts. I guess the UK. Let's not talk about, you know, Matthew Camby, let's talk about the other people in the Chilean team. I know Matthew Camby gets all the, all the goddamn attention, yeah, but... TFG, number 37. Let's be real here. My man, Suntan. <laughs> Suntan Sun played so cool. well. That guy is a beast. Yeah, the Phil players popped off this year. 
not even full player. It's like it's like we became a part of the like compared to the team from last year. I think I think Chile really bounced back, and it makes me so happy because I'm I am friends with a, a good amount of them. So to see them, you know, reach uh, the place that they did makes me really really happy for them. Fiery the highlight. Uh, pissing off Twitch chat in Grand Finals. Oh, <laughs> it is, it is no, genuinely incredible. Buddy. It is genuinely Buddy. incredible Buddy. how Buddy. much people Buddy. care about Buddy. that. You have to explain the story behind the 5.0 Yap cost because I am <laughs> legally bound to you. <laughs> Dude. All right? Okay. All right, so you got to explain the 5.0 Yap cost. Oh okay, God. so basically what I was originally doing was I was just talking in chat. Like, I just wanted to get vibes up. I just wanted to keep the vibes on the team up and have everyone, you know, focus on the match, all that sort of stuff. I started noticing that every single person in Twitch chat was getting <laughs> irrationally upset. It was actually insane how hard people cared about that. <laughs> and at that point, I was just like, you know what? Let's just get everyone in this. And Nick joined in on the yapping. Leo did as well. It was actually, it was just insane. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Long-term psychological effects to win the tiebreaker. <laughs> I mean, USA was going to win that tiebreaker anyway. Let's be real here. True. Fire, I think you have the most World Cup wins of any player now. Yeah, Five, six. Yeah, yes, oh, I'm six? at six. Michael at Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan, six OWC badge. Well, no, I have seven because I... We don't talk about 2017. How many? <laughs> oh, yeah. well, let's, let's talk more about 2017. Oh, yeah, you, you'd want to, of course. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Is, Amazing uh, Break Grand Finals. I blame Ibki's pen. I blame Happy Six Hand. I blame Happy, happy Six, six Hand is the main thing. Failed yeah. scores not ha failed scores not counting. The failed mm -hmm. scores not counting wasn't really that problematic. It's just the fact that they chose Amazing Break as no mod and then Night and Nights as hard rock. Night and Nights was messed up. Habib was FCing until the end and then he failed. I remember that one like yesterday. Yeah, Night of Nights HR mm -hmm. would have been fine if failed scores counted. A lot of the maps standard. would have been fine. Like, you had yeah, dopamine in 2016. Oh my <laughs> god, that was the worst. Dopamine in that machine. Dopamine, dopamine 2016. Oh god, I forgot. Dopamine 2016. We need to bring that back. Hard oh, Rock next OWC 2024 Hard Rock. Put that in. Dude, Fire, I just looked at your profile. You have so many pink badges. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't really yeah. got that much variety in color. <laughs> It's like pink, 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 blue. Pink, 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 blue. <laughs> That's okay, a good anyways, thing, sorry, though. My like, bad. I, I, I just, just had it. to, like, point it out. <laughs> but, dude, I was I was so close to opening my IRC and joining in, but I unironically thought that Leo was going to kill me if I fucking joined in on the game. Oh, I mean, Leo sorry. joined in as well. I honestly thought, I honestly thought he me, probably would have been fine with it. To. You told me to, and I and I knew you were gonna be okay with it. I didn't know if Leo was gonna be okay with it, but I had my client open, and I was like, I could join. I could join right now. <laughs> Dude, it it would have been it would have been like the most troll thing to have like three refs just come in and piss off Twitch chat by talking <laughs> well, all the time. Well, last year, last year refs were in the chat, like they were. We were watching. It's just they weren't saying anything like this yeah. year. It was so good. Commentating that, I was thoroughly entertained. <laughs> yeah, I remember in a specific year fun. when a specific ref made a specific comment about a specific player's uh, height. Specific oh, height? Oh, no. Mm. Uh, specific specific no height comment. Uh, definitely <laughs> definitely had some impact. Region. That yeah, was that, the real 5.0 yap cost. That was the 10.0 yap cost. That, <laughs> when you're actually tilting a player on a team. Bro, he wasn't red team or blue team. He was like green team. Yeah. Green team. Oh my god. What's that uh what's that one meme regarding uh OWC 2017? Like, oh my pen broke, oh my hands bad, oh I was sick, oh my mom came in the room. Oh I, uh, my, I, my hands were sweaty. Oh my my uh tablet was aligned wrong, my keyboard was in the wrong spot, I had the wrong key binds, um, I got ganked by mom, got ganked by my dog, uh, got ganked by the alignment of the stars, got ganked by the sun. Otherwise we would have won that one though. 
Well, wait, we also had a practice to disconnect his internet during that one map. But oh, I think see, there you go. Was that, mm -hmm. was that the one where he internet. came into the match and was like, Apraxia, you gotta calm down? Was that the one? No, that was hey, 2018 it's so when Vaxxe disconnected. 2018, yeah. Vaxxe disconnected yeah, on no, that DT map. Dude, that, I was getting so hard. I was getting flashbacks so hard when that happened. I was like, oh, fuck. 2017 <laughs> was the year that Windows Purva update happened in the middle of Coconut Society. Yeah, so we don't really got an excuse. This is funny. Huh. That that whole grand finals is just funny. <laughs> uh, Everyone says it's the best grand finals because we lost. So hey, yeah, you know. No, I don't know. Like people's uh, memory of stuff, they have a very selective memory up until like a certain point. So ever since like the U.S. started winning, every time the U.S. loses, it makes the OWC good. Like 2017 best OWC. Why? Because, like, Poland won with yep. Kokono Sose Tengaku, uh, like, whatever else kind of bullshit was in the Grand Finals. Like, 2018, again this year? 2018 was good as well because 70 point Bubble Man win and then Bubble Man going off on the time break. <laughs> everyone was like yeah. hog champing over that. 2019, everyone doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, no, 2019, uh, 2019, 2019 was like the worst. Who cares about that? that was, 2020, so Germany bad, almost man. did it, maybe, kind of. Uh, and then they only played DT. Yeah. yeah. And then 2021 was kind of... 2021 was also kind of anticlimactic for a yeah. lot of people, I think. Yeah. But hey, at least Harrison got the play. True. <laughs> oh, true. True. Love Max. Harrison, Jim, what was your favorite moment BTMC. of this year's LWC? Dude, like, I was watching Grand Finals of, like, like 10 other Canadians, and I think we were just all screaming during, like, the play that's happening on stream right now. Like, when you... Actually, this is, like... I'm the, the back time, yeah. like the first time, like the second time you did it, like that was actually insane. Like, yeah, no, dude, that I was, was watching insane, that man. live. I was watching mm -hmm. Form play that live. I, as soon as he got like 500k, I just You're knew better. he was gonna FC. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, I think like that map, like that moment was so hype. Like, I don't even know. Like, people were just like, we're like joking about after like a week later, people were, like, guys, I'm still thinking about the form score, like, because we're doing nothing relevant at all, but. That's how much of an impact it had. Like that shit is so sick, man. I don't know how that. I don't know how that didn't yeah. tilt us. Honestly, that was the hardest map in the pool. Like every pooler was convinced. Like this, this is the hardest map. Like maybe TB aside, like this is the one that everybody is collectively shitting the bed and getting 300k on, and then he just does that. Like yeah. yeah. On the the broadcast, we're all like, "This map is so hard. Like everyone's gonna struggle with this one," and then he just goes and FCs it. <laughs> like even his first <laughs> like. About it. Even his yeah, first so play, like, yeah, yeah, his, yeah, his, his, his time best was already local, insane. His best local before he played it in match was 500k. Because I, when he FC'd it, I was like, oh, he probably has three FCs on locals. He's done it before, but like, no, that was just magic. I think his best act was not even 97 on locals. Yeah. So somehow he FCs on 99% in match. I genuinely don't understand the kind of clutch factor it takes to do that. This is like you know, one of the most- was simply blessed by yeah, God. Sick, actually. By the way, he did miss on the like wiggle stream stuff. That, 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 that pattern's not hitable. Yeah. That pattern's not hitable. That pattern's not hitable. Right? hitable. Like, he hit it immediately. Like it's, dude, he hit it on the <laughs> other- I don't know how, man. That That is like the hardest pattern in the entire map. <laughs> uh, I also felt like a lot of personal euphoria from like during grand finals like time of, like showcase like i felt like for me personally it felt like a like a very large like weight like kind of left my shoulders because of the amount of effort i put in so i was really happy and uh, afterwards it felt really good because everyone was like everyone was like was like wow this shit is so sick and i don't know it just felt like you know like uh like this whole project came to fruition like i know from the ups and downs fruition. we had the entire year like fruition so i um <laughs> you can't can't go wrong with me pronouncing half the words wrong but um classic Pretty much like I don't know, it just felt like uh it was really like wholesome overall. I was really happy everything. So it was sick. Miles. Also I just realized my mic uh accidentally died for no reason during that whole segment. So, How long have you been talking? Uh, nice. uh like since I got back from checking on my cat with the app costs. Um No way. Yeah, oh, no, no I, 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 I I don't know. Like the the he had like ninety six five best stack before this, and then the full combo is just kind of uh, absurd. I don't know, man. Like we would just call it like the hardest map in the pool, full stop, and then he goes in 600k full combo. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't it's, know. It's worse HR player though. Like you, you just have to hold him to his own standard on on his maps because I, there are silly. very few to know people who 
play any type of map the way worst HR player plays worst yeah. HR player maps compared and to like the average. Especially also like if you slow down his replay, he's got the play on YouTube from his locals. Um, he like snaps each individual note on the stream. Like every single note is individually snapped. Like he's not cheesing any of it. He just like actually grid snaps all of the notes with his cursor. It's insane. Um, I don't know anybody else who would play that stream pattern like that, but uh, it's a little wild. Mm -hmm. All right, Miles. Okay, one. so I have two. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention mine as a commentator, and then mine as a pooler. As a commentator, oh, I, I mean, mention mine as a commentator. <laughs> the, the coolest match I got, which kind of sucks, because I'm the opposite of iFlame. I got to commentate my country that I have been rooting for every single year, no matter what, throughout any drama or hardship. Always support the USA, baby. But I got to commentate on them getting stomped on a mid-round pool by Canada. No and problem, man. Glad go. I could help. Hey, I mean, <laughs> Fire 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 do you remember Corsace in like 2018 when I failed two maps in a row? You were commentating that match, <laughs> and that's still like the maybe the fourth most viewed clip on this channel. If you go check it uh, right now, wait, is oh it actually? God. Oh my yes, god! Yes, it is. The fourth it most is. viewed clip on this channel is me that's failing. Funny. So you I got the mile. Is it the mile shake certified mile shake as well? You got that uh, in there. Yep. Oh, uh, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, that one was a crazy one, but uh, yeah, uh, otherwise that is a commentator. I think like next year, if I want to change anything, I'm not putting myself as available for 13 UTC matches because I would just be so <laughs> mentally scattered for those early matches. Like I cannot make cohesive sentences. Dude, but, during uh, during Course Ace Open 2020, I put myself as available for a 10 UTC match, and just like nobody else was taking anything. I think this was back before we did availability, so uh, nobody else was taking it at all. Uh, it was the night before. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna take the 10 UTC match. That was 6 a.m. I woke up and casted at 6 a.m. I don't know if I'm doing that again unless it's like grand finals on a uh, like huge tournament because it's. Mm -hmm. Like even thirteen UTC is still rough. Uh, but Maybe yeah, I don't understand no, it's, as a it's referee. Rough. Like I don't understand the whole like time thing because I have, I have refed at every single UTC it, hour. It's just harder to understand it's, the it, it's, whole time thing. It's easier to ref when you are like not all there than it is to commentate. In my experience, yeah. no, that's who's... false. I okay. What do you I, mean, Kay? I have done both at really strange times, right? Like I've refed at three, four a.m. before I've commentated at five a.m. Commentating, refing, refing at refing at five a.m. I'm not coherent, okay? Commentating, you need like a level of mental sharpness to really do it yeah. well, though. At that I, time, I, 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 I feel like if you're a color caster, it's harder. But if you're a play-by-play -play yeah. caster, it's probably like. If you're play by play, it's harder. You have yeah, to actually have energy. Yeah, you have to actually play by like, stuff. The, uh, like, we're. Aaron and I are people who have done both yeah. for years yeah, and years. Rest? So I feel very confident saying, yeah. yeah, refereeing is way easier when you are not mentally all yeah. there oh than commentary. Yeah, if you're not there, easier, you can just I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm, make small oh, wait, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me. Let her, let her, let her yap. Let her yap. She needs her copium. Wait, I'm not saying. I think that commentary is infinitely harder at early mornings and refing. However, Aaron was saying that refing at 5 a.m. is is easy, but for but it's not easy. I'm not saying that commentary is easier than refing at 5 a.m. I'm just saying that refereeing is not hard. <sighs> All yep, right. cost 16.0. Anyway. Okay, and now <laughs> my yap cost my yap cost is like 700. All right. So the other thing about this that I'm surprised none of the other poolers really mentioned is that the dynamic on the pooling team this year was just hilarious. Like there was progress, any progress. Like there was so <laughs> many memes, like no bad blood between like anyone on the team at all. Like everyone was just stupid. Like as much pooling as we did, there was also like just sitting in VC, just like being annoying and stupid to each other. And that really makes the whole like very like strenuous, very time consuming process a lot more bearable. So um 
That was Everyone Donna's does, fault. Donna looks like he has some words. On that, that was uh, Donna's <laughs> fault, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> rap snitches. Oh my okay. god. Not, I oh should, my I god. Let's not leak the next year pools. Let's just. Let's <laughs> yeah, and then the pooling, uh, the pooler tier list. We've got to redo that now that the oh year is done. Oh my god. The pooler tier list went crazy, pooler actually. Uh, if you know, you know. I am not a I am not a troll. I am a mediator. And Dio oh is Walmart. God. I'm I'm Walmart. What? what? Yeah, I'm Walmart. Our tiers, our tiers were What um, is this me? Okay. <laughs> the tiers were Walmart, mediator, troll, hater, and black pill. I'll let okay. you guess who was on each tier. I think the okay, only so Donna, person Donna in the hater tier, tier was, no, no, was Matthew. Sure. Matthew. Really? Dude, I thought Matthew was the biggest though. hater. Chiv yeah. was a mediator. Yeah, no, Matthew, I can see being a hater, actually. Wait. I don't remember what the definition of Walmart was, by the way. I just thought it was funny. I think the better definition is actually McDonald's. Cause, McDonald's? Like, <laughs> Is this I, a fat joke, Miles? No, uh, are we really God. doing this on air right now? This is like live 9.0 yet, folks, right now. I, I yeah, have no know. idea what anyone is talking about here, so okay, you guys, so you guys Walmart, can just do whatever you want, all right? You I'm make a Walmart you. map pool. You don't expect anything special, but if you get a Walmart map pool, you know it's going to be all right. Like, you go to McDonald's, you bite into that burger, you're like, yeah, this is not the best burger I've ever had, but it tastes okay, and I'm happy I'm eating it. That's what a Walmart pooler is. My He's God, bro. Trash, He's Sorbin. saying my shit sucks. This is, Dio, the, this you... is the real flame. He's no, saying Dio, my pools adapted. are garbage, chat. You've adapted since Saraband. Since Saraband, you have adapted. <laughs> now you like, are one I of us. Like, so you're moving like, up I a tier this year, Dio. I still What's agree with Saraband. Is... That map is done. Rest in peace, Saraband. Rest in peace, Saraband. Rest in piss, Saraband. Elbozo. Goodbye. Jerry Beans will live, but Sarah Jerry. Band will die. <laughs> I have Jerry no Bean. idea what anyone is Sarah talking Band. about here. Please, going on at all anymore. please give me some context here. I don't, I don't <laughs> all good, you don't need I the do context. Understand. No one needs any of the context. Is this what I'm missing out on pooling? Like, damn, yes. I'll just not sign up next I'm, year and go I'm pool. <laughs> yeah, come pool. You can join the Walmart stuff. No. Yeah, man, just, exa <laughs> just exactly. That is exact. You know what I've I been, want. I've been, I've been <laughs> well, at least, like at least Walmart employees get paid. You know what, True. Fiery? Forget these oh guys. God, we'll go God, make God. our own target pool. But Dio, play. since then you have acquired the vision, so you're moving up in the what rankings vision, now. What vision, bro? The vision. I just looked the vision. maps that you guys Trademark. were putting in and was like, yeah, this is fine. <laughs> the vision has been acquired. Oh my God. I think you need to put the Guess Who's Back DT in the next pool. Hey, oh, we'll true. think about you it. You know what, Miles? We are actually doing a tournament where the vision is very relevant, right? We have, uh, you know, that one that one other tournament that we're working on together coming up. So uh, that's mm -hmm. that's one where the vision is somewhat relevant. Yeah, we'll we'll have the vision. Yeah. All right. I... Um, enough enough internal pooling memes and discussion there that nobody else knows yeah, what the I fuck no we're talking on, about. Brother. Um, we do have like a couple of things that are just like good discussion points. Um, want to talk about like most hype matches and let's leave out grand finals for this because that's the, that's the cop out one. answer, right? That's like, the only one. Yeah, that was like ob <laughs> ob the, only the one obvious that pick for everyone. Well, um, actually, USA versus Golden was pretty good. I mean, that's that's exactly what yeah. we're going to talk about otherwise. So, like, what are what are some of the most hype matches that we saw this World Cup aside from grand finals? Because I think Germany, Canada. Yeah, Austin. Germany, Canada was really good. Um, but even aside Canada. from grand finals, there were so many really good. Yeah, Australia, here. Poland as well. Australia, Poland's yeah. probably yeah. Yeah, Australia, yeah. Australia, yeah. Do not sleep on Australia, Poland, because that was there were oh, yeah, not Australia, that Poland. many tiebreakers, but that no. was Germany. Well, that was the reason one. why why Poland got top eight because Australia knocked them down. Into yeah, losers back end. The semis yeah. had a lot of good matches actually. Now yeah. that I think about mm -hmm. it, yeah, Germany, Russia, <laughs> Chile, UK, and then Philippines, yeah. South Korea. Semis was the, weird. The ultimate though. copium is that Canada destroyed the bracket, so that's why Poland didn't get True. top six. <laughs> semis was weird because you had germany russia tiebreaker you had uh uk chile tiebreaker and then you had poland 6-1 china usa 6-1 sweden and then usa 6-2 poland and germany 6-2 chile so it was like and and australia 6-2 canada so you had like two tiebreakers and then like some matchups that were good on paper but didn't really end up playing out. oh south korea 6-4 philippines right um that was a good one as well that was actually that match like that was 
Yeah, both they went up four was, one. It was both yeah, a super hype map match, but a really, but a really big shame because Philippines just got fourth player and ran out of picks, and then South Korea was just like zoom. Um, Forum after FCing Hard Rock three. Yeah, yeah. Forum when Blue Zone with Hard Rock. Uh, um, shout out to uh, what was it? Ukraine. Shout out to Romania. Ukraine, uh, I was Ukraine gonna say Indonesia. shout outs. To, shout outs to um, Ukraine five zero over in Indonesia in round of thirty two. Yep. Also shout outs to Romania five four Singapore. The one of the That's two tiebreakers. Also uh, Italy New Zealand in round of thirty two. Um, that that takes us back a few weeks, but that was the like ultimate. We can play a skill set. You can play a skill set. We have literally no overlap. Straight to tiebreaker we go. That was um, both <laughs> New Zealand matches. Both New yeah, Zealand was, matches were exactly yeah. like yeah. matches. I mean, that's yeah, just New Zealand as a team, though, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like that team that gets so well. better if they can put three tech players on, and then they're just like, suddenly, okay, we have a tapping roster and a tech roster, and now we can actually play more than one skill set. Um, I don't know. Japan, Kazakhstan? Anyone? Tiebreaker? Again, for Japan? Uh, against yeah. Kazakhstan? Yeah. 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 You can look at every tiebreaker match and say, wow, this is yeah, a good match. A lot of the, well, a lot of the tiebreakers were, like, cool stories to the tiebreaker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of the early rounds had like surprisingly good matches. Like there was lots of tiebreakers, lots of upsets, and it made like usually the early rounds are pretty one sided for the most part. But the, but this already see there's a lot of different storylines between like Kazakhstan, Sweden, Ukraine, all the tiebreakers. It was it was just a great year overall. Here's a, a one sided match that I'll say was like really good because it was just like good content. It was Ukraine five zero window. Oh, we, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the most nuts content ever. Because I was an Indo believer. Like, they were getting their good guys back. I was like, yeah, Indo straight to top eight, baby. And then they just get Ukraine. Although Ukraine, last two years, really freaking good in early stages. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I, I, I commentated that one with Azer. And there was a point in the match where we were like, what is happening, dude? What is this? <laughs> How do we just keep winning picks? But, uh, yeah, I think that was, like, part of... um. I mean, Ukraine played so well that I think even if Indo didn't have a really rough match, Ukraine might still won, like still have won. But uh, Ukraine having the the match of their life and Indo like really bombing at the same time to result in a comical scoreline of five zero of like C nine versus C twenty four was just awesome to see. It was hilarious. If we're talking about content, though, um, I think the biggest like content and shakeup of the world cup this year came from germany canada 2-5 in round of 16 and mm. then united states canada 1-6 in quarterfinals because yeah. that completely destroyed the bracket oh, like yeah. Yeah, you I mean, have canada germany in losers bracket in quarterfinals that weekend playing japan and indonesia and then eventually going on to beat both russia and chile afterwards who were other really good teams um, and then also beating Canada after losing to them in round of 16 during the finals weekend, 7-1. Um, then you have United States in the loser's bracket in semifinals, which is the first time in like 10 years that that's happened. Um, and of course, from then on, the most points the United States dropped before facing off against South Korea was three against Philippines. So they just completely wiped the floor of the entire loser's bracket after that. Germany um, Japan was 6 was 4 wild. as well which is crazy like Germany was so close to going out in quarterfinals instead of placing yeah. top 4 that would have been just Kazakhstan can right. beat Germany dude the potential mm, is yeah. there Russia <laughs> Russia <laughs> Germany was probably one of my favorite matches that we didn't really talk about a lot like that one really went the distance and it was like you know if Chaconi didn't disconnect on that free mod one that would have been like a 50k difference on that map yeah, and so that, that was a clutch moment that got robbed that I think would have really put that match on the map as being like a hype match. But yeah. like Germany's comeback there was great. It was ridiculous. And we even looked at the score from Ciccone, by the way, just for full disclosure. Um, the staff at the time was looking at Ciccone's stream. We saw his exact score. And even with his score, as Miles said, it would have been like a 50k difference in favor of Germany. It's just sad that it wasn't on the live broadcast. Yeah. Aaron, you had something? I was going to say, no, I was just going to make a joke like content of the year if we're just talking content then it's uh canada plays qualifiers with two members at twitchcon yeah, no, yeah. that is the actual people, content of the yeah. year right more there. people yeah. should just content. like get blackout drunk while playing qualifiers or like just run out. over their tablet with their car and then okay, try playing mind. that like just just do something like <laughs> destroy the bracket be the agent of chaos man yeah like, waiting be for the Korea. change you want to see in the world <laughs> We'll finally get to see Australia at the number one seed because the United go. States and South Korea are just going to get like 11th and 16th. 
next oh, year. I'm God. calling it. That the, the, the true underdog run, just hard int qualifiers, so you can make as hard of a regular bracket as possible for yourself, so you can prove to everybody you really are that good. Oh my God. The hardest road. My next chapter. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest road in question. I think. Uh, I think if I had to pick, like one match for me that was like the best let's call it non tiebreaker match outside yeah. of actually not even non tiebreaker match i think one of my favorite matches was actually uk chile cuz a, a lot of the cuz for me that match was really good not just because it was tiebreaker or because oh chile won dio finally gets uh, you know saved from 2021 but like the players on Chile who actually won them that match were not intercamping Matthew. Like, they played well. Number 37 hidden us. Yeah. Number 37 hidden us. TFGE hidden top score the tiebreaker for the weekend in that match. Above anyone on Germany or Russia, by the way. Um, like, there were all of their... Like, all of their supporting members got a chance to shine, and they all looked really, really good. And they were the reason that you that Chile actually won that match as well, which was really, really cool to see. Um, obviously, you can you can't give enough credit to Intercamming Mathy because they are the two carries that form the core of the roster, and that's what allows their other members to go in on the maps where they're comfortable and pop off like they did. Um, but it was really cool to watch a lot of the supporting members get their chance to shine there. Yeah, for sure. I think like people need to like besides like tiebreaker matches, like there were a lot of really good six four six threes. Yeah, like people always touched on Germany, Japan. People touched on Russia, USA as well. I think like um, we post. I really enjoyed the Romania France match as well, as well as France Sweden. Like these were both actually in quarterfinals, and I think both of them are really close. Um, I did not enjoy the Romania France. People talk. <laughs> people talk. Were you a lot roughing about... that? If, if you know, you know. No, if you know, you know. I'm sorry, Leo, but if you know, you know. <laughs> oh boy. Um, people talk a lot about you know Ukraine played really well this year. Like shouts to some of their star players, like um. Like Dench and Poma, um, and Bench, uh, the and Bench. Sherry Tori as well, and Magneta. But and Magneta, uh, yeah. I think Sweden also. Obviously, people know like um, this is a team that really upgraded, and seeing them beat a lot of household names this year, including France, including Hong Kong, like and making it all the way to semifinals is a really deep run for them. And I feel like people really still sleep on the fact that that team is really good off the back of like one specific player. Um, obviously, you know you have your previous, like. You'll be previously uh, really strong student players in or oh, Andros traditionally with Reed Cat. Um, but this year, you know, Skiller really showed that he's one of the best players in the world right now at, at his rank range, at least for sure. Um, but I really think that he, I'm pretty sure he actually most maps he played. So he was like, he popped off. And same with um, Zbinx, who also played really well. I think that guy, nobody even expected him to play like the way he did, but he actually FC a lot more maps. So. I think watching Sweden was really good. Like, watching an underdog, like, a truly underdog team, you know? You can say, yeah. like, Canada or Australia. Like, these guys are not expected to win these matches. But, like, seeing Sweden literally just, like, beat, like, Romania. Well, not Romania. Beating France and beating Hong Kong, two teams they historically have been placing way lower, is, I think, really good. I mean, Sweden was seed 23, and they made it to top 12. They overperformed their qualifier seeding by two whole rounds of gameplay. By all metrics, they should have been out against Hong Kong, but they beat them 6-2, beat France 6-4, and then finally lost to United States, the eventual winner of the tournament <laughs> in uh, Losers Round 4. So this was, yeah, a very, very good run for Sweden, um, given that they were projected to lose based on qualifiers in the, you know, second round of Losers Bracket. This was an awesome run the for them. World, the world if Suagi Hong Kong. Oh my god. Yeah, GG. He Jeez. literally yeah, he, like he replayed. The score he was setting as a test player. Yeah, he <laughs> replayed seventy percent of our whole like pools for the showcase, and he didn't want to play because he was too busy. Like, I, I I get it, but at the same time, it's like, man, imagine, right? No, Bobby. Hong Kong could have been so good. Imagine a world where like every single like Hong Kong player that played tournaments is like active at the same time. So you have like Tsuragi and MCY four, and you have Xion and. You have F2X, but you also Hello, have... Hello, Tom Wall, 225. Oh, my God. Yeah, do that. Let's go to Bring back Saku, bring back Chaos Blitz and his peak power. You see, like, Chaos if you had, like, these teams synced up, is that, like, broken? Yeah. That team could be really good. I mean, you, yeah, but, I'll, I mean, I'll if see. you were... If you were assembling, like, you know, peak composite nations, like, 
there's an obvious like just stomp answer and that's no fun so you have to give that to every country if you're going to give it to one country and i actually think they no, would. actually i think I know canada the would be british too broken empire, if Asia had time. the british yeah. empire never dissolved i think we could have the uk be the japan taiko wc of that's true are we counting that's the true. united states yes we're yeah. the, no, if we're counting the united the states eastern yeah. united states we're counting like India, we're ca- I don't know why India. India, <laughs> yeah, noted. Only you see noted. Noted. Taiko champion. South Africa, India. we're counting Egypt, we're counting Malta, we're counting whatever. Malta. The- Okay. Israel. Israel. I get Zilver. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Canada United States. Okay. Like, it, 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 take it. Take out the United States. Does peak composite former British Empire nations beat peak composite United yes. States? You have no. Bubble Man, Emrec, both at Bubble peak, Man probably. Emrec, um, yeah, but you have Vaxi, yeah. Inki, Rectigon, Fancy Lady, Tommy at peak. Yeah, but you have Bubble Man, Emrec, Aaron, That's come the on. players. You have, peak, uh, peak Azer, Peak Zudinator. Yeah, peak uh, peak Azer. No, put, put some respect on my man's name. Come on. He yeah, he's going to FC good. United again. Don't worry about it, guys. Okay, well, he did it on tiebreaker, man. Exactly. Exactly. Proven. hard rock one. On the topic of peak United States, we, and by we, I mean me, Aaron, and Dio, have actually had a conversation. Oh, I love this conversation. Uh, Drama aside, (laughs) drama aside, Twitter aside, all this fucking shit online aside, and only going based on skill, peak United States... If if Aaron, if you could kindly do the honor. Uh, uh, I have to go find it. Yeah, I don't know where the screenshot is. Peak... Peak, uh, peak composite United States. I think our consensus ended up being, it's and again, it's it's oh yeah, What's there that? we go. Wait, what? Uh, it was it was uh, Vaxe, Idki, Rectigon, Fancy Lad, Toy, Arison, Apraxia, and Utami. That thing was yeah. so stupid. Yeah, also, I, I can find that message because I just control F Apraxia, and it's literally the only time his name has ever been mentioned. <laughs> it's so channel. toxic. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, it's the guys... only time we've ever typed his username in that channel. I'm good. Y'all don't remember just... Zav's peak. That guy was. He was so good. The goat. Yeah. He was so good. If you do not, if you were not around in like 2017, 2018, oh my You're god, insane. Apraxia was. Are you only so good. considering tournaments? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The yes. only yes. thing I know is that for. Get Arizona out of there. Get, get Arison actually out of there. I mean, who yeah, do you I replace agree. him with for... Who do you replace him with for, like, his skill set, though? Tony. Tony, probably. Tony. Like, I guess you could do Tony. Tony had uh, higher peaks. Uh, Arison really only had, like... Like, not to put any hate on his name, like, he's still, like, one of the best speed players of all time, but, like, in OWC 2021, I think he was, like... He was, like, shaky. He would always get best act in the lobby, but, like, one miss. Kind of the same thing as Sawada, actually, last year. I think I think the reason I think Arison is like maybe the only one who we would who we put in there like kind of yeah, because of solo performance yeah, because yeah. like his solo performance and his skill set was just so unbelievably insane. Also, I think if you have Vax, Recti, Utami, and uh, Apraxa, you already have a speed roster, so you don't need another like guy. Oh yeah, what about Xerius? What about Xerius? That guy was the Xerius best player. We, 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 we talked about him. Yeah. Our next topic is we're a little off topic. Beat. Yeah. United States of America. Oh team. my God. Uh-huh. Yeah, so okay, I think I think we're I think we're getting a little yeah, off topic with this better. one. Let's, all right, listen. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I think okay, we've covered all the matches. Be, what would the composite like best players in the oh, world my. look like? From we're mo- we're moving on. Okay. Miles, oh, uh, Iron Rage, Cookie Zero, right. Minwoo. But, but before Let's we end off, does does anyone want to brag about their predictions, their pickums? I I picked USA yeah. to win, yes. and a lot of people picked South Korea to win. So I'll I had zero go. points in my pickums because I, I forgot I, to do qualifiers. Where did I, where did oh, I, I end? end? I don't I even did, remember where I ended. Hold I on. did not get a single pick wrong the last three weeks in pickums. That was kind of neat. I ended, ended number nineteen overall yeah. in pickums, which oh, uh, that's pretty good actually. Oh, that's I not bad. Do... Some I, guy I, named Zolex run. Yeah. I wanted to look back. Speaking of pickums, like I wanted to look back at how we did in general with our like pick prediction stream versus final results because yeah. there were some like weird ones but there were some places where i think we got things pretty spot on as well but i don't yeah. have the i don't have a screenshot of our prediction result handy yeah i didn't do um, do pickums but on uh full circle twitter, i called exactly. sweden yeah, over hong kong and france that was my my big one <laughs> mine was aus over poland i yeah, was the aus yeah. representative was, but yeah my pick them like for me trolling the whole first half of the tournament, I ended up in the top fifty, which was pretty good. Okay, I, think I got so forty six. I've got our I've got our initial predictions up. 
uh, and I'm going to go through them. We had United States first as a group, which was correct. We had South Korea second as a group, which was correct. We had Poland third, which, of course, did not happen. It was actually Australia, who we had five, six uh, collectively, which was pretty good. Um, We had Germany fourth as a group, which was correct. We had Canada five, six as a group, which was correct. Of course, Australia, we had five, six. They ended up being third. Um, We had Philippines, Russia, both in top eight. Philippines ended up being top six. Russia ended up being top 12. So we were one one off on both of those. Uh, 9-12, we had Chile, China, Indonesia, and UK. Uh, Chile, of course, ended up being top eight. China was top 12. UK was top 12. Um, and Indonesia ended up being top 16. So one off on both uh, Chile and Indonesia. Um, and then top 16, we had France, Hong Kong, Japan, and Romania. Uh, of course, Hong Kong actually ended up going out top 24 to Sweden, who was one of the top 12 teams in the tournament this year. Uh, that We had top 24 instead, so really, really high overperformance from Sweden. I mean, that was their qualifier seed. They qualified seed 23, and they popped off. They, they played awesome. Um, and then uh, beating out Hong Kong in top 24. Japan was top six. Oh, no. Japan, Japan was also top 24. Yeah, Japan um, 24. Romania was, Romania was also, also top 24, top, actually. No, Romania was top 16. Romania was, Romania was, no, wait. Top 24? No. Romania? They they went out no, top 24. Got, top 24. Where are they? They got owned um, so bad. They, they yeah. lost to France. There they are. They lost to yeah. France. Yeah, Fra- France was the only one that we had in top 16 in that, that was actually top 16. The others were they lost their first uh, place. all top 24. Yeah, I have to imagine the biggest variation was must have been Ukraine, idea. Um, no, no Sweden was our we biggest variation, oh, okay. I think. Um, we had who not qualifying? We had Kazakhstan not qualifying, and they qualified. Yeah, but I mean, they only got top thirty-two. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Was, that's one qualify. off. Sweden was two tiers. I yeah, think, Sweden I, is the I, biggest one. Yeah, I, I think picking between like the bottom end of like twenty-fifth through thirty-second, and then like the top. It's kind like, of let's say 32nd group. through 36th or so. I think that whole range of like 10 teams is just really variable. Technically, yeah. Poland was also tied for biggest. Uh, mistake, yeah, but that's also when there's only one team per tier in top four and then two teams in top six, yeah. top eight. So, like, it gets harder to be exact. You know, if you're off by literally two spots, you are off by two tiers. If you're off by two spots in 17 through 24, you're still in the same tier. You so, know. you know. Mm hmm. I have a prop or I have a question. So I was uh, notoriously calling for Russia top four. Would they have made it to top four if they beat Germany in that tiebreaker? Uh, what? Uh, who? Who did Germany uh, face Russia? after they, Russia? They faced Canada, right? They would have lost to Canada. I think they would have lost. They would not have lost. No, they would not have lost. Canada. Canada. Without, yeah, would have without lost Canada, Canada played, yeah. Russia would have beaten Canada there. I think. Yeah, they would have yeah. gone fourth. No, if, they, if they beat uh, if they beat Germany in the tiebreaker. They would have faced Chile afterwards. I think, beat, I think they beat Chile anyway. And I, yeah. I think they beat we, Chile, Canada. We, we predicted. We predicted that the Russia Germany winner would beat either of the winners of yes, UK Chile, like regardless yeah. of who it was. The top, the the team from the other match was going to win the the potential there. So yeah. I think that was always going to be either Russia or Germany. Yeah, and I think of course with Canada, with Canada um, scaling, stuff, yeah, yeah. Um. If Philippines, if this was three v three, would Philippines be first place? Yes. Dude, yeah. Maybe. maybe. I, uh, I don't like, think they'd be first place. I think they would have placed first, higher, but, but I don't think they would have been first. Yeah. Maybe they they would have had three? a real chance at top three. I don't know. Archer, so uh, yeah. Archer, uh, Saturday tuna worst at forum. USA would have been good. Yeah. Uh, Feels like arguably of... South Korea didn't have like a fourth member of the core either. It was like, as iFlame said, uh, forum Karcher tuna. As but like I, think the, three. I think the I think the difference between their fourth on maps and Philippines' is fourth on maps was oh it's huge uh, oh yeah, it's yeah, insane yeah. it's yeah. huge and also South Korea's core three don't really mesh together in many maps yeah wait, 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 wait. I actually have a really question so like the standard World Cups unlike the other modes is the only one that operates on a four v four everything else operates three v three right. Uh, no, some of them are 2v2. Yeah, Tyco World Cup is 2v2. Tyco's 2v2. Tyco's 2v2. Tyco's 2v3. I have no idea. 
And I think okay, well, Mania is... Mania is also 3v3. 3v3, 3v3. 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 yeah. Is Tycho really 2v2? Yeah, Tyco, yes. Tycho's 2v2, yeah. Because there Tycho's are not enough players, players because you know, no one signs like... up because Japan wins every time. Yeah. yeah. They need to have Tycho World Cup with no Japan. Like real, well, like I'm, I'm saying, Japan I'm only the world. Yeah, Japan I'm only won. semi tongue, tongue in cheek saying that. Like, there's, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. But it's just a Ooh. shame that literally no one else has any sort of a chance at all. Like, you're hoping to get a point. The the, the issue is it's, that if you take Japan better. out of TWC, then you just South Korea or Taiwan is gonna win. <laughs> hey, at least or you're Hong saying Kong. or. At least there's an at or, least or, least or, or. Is, yeah, I guess. Wait. I guess there's that, but like, just Tyco, get better. Tyco's just 3v3, develop right? a scene. Is it being gaslit? Acer, are um, you still here? Well, I think the hard thing is that Japan just has access to Taiko, like, in arcades, I and do. the rest Taiko of the world doesn't. Like, no, they no, actually no, no, no. have interest in that. Like, in anywhere else in the world, like, it's hard to find a Taiko machine. I, I'm so no, mad about that, too. Nothing is stopping people from just grinding Taiko. Like, Wait, yeah, no, Taiko, Taiko is like, 3v3. I know Catch is 3v3. It must be one of I the think, Mania World Cups I, is 2v2. I, I, yeah, I'm pretty it, sure it's 7 It might seven, be 7k. It must be 7k. I could have sworn Taiko was 2v2, to be honest. I don't know why I thought that. Oh, yeah. seven. No, 7k. Yeah, you guys are fucking gaslighting me. They see 7k is 2v2, and everything else is 3v3. All right. I, I, mean, I knew there was one that was 2v2. Yeah, T TWC, I remember tuning in, and it was 2v2 at one point. I think that probably was, like, last year. Or, like... No, I, I, I know. I distinctly Taiko remember it was two v two. I'm about to I'm, look through every single. I'm about WC to look there's through. Ever been. No, 2022 was three v three. Yeah, 2022 was three v three. It's the seven k World Cup that is two v two team. It's the seven k World Cup that's two v two. Yeah. Oh, well, Azer's yeah, telling yeah. me. Azer's telling me it flips with two or three. So <laughs> I was. I I, hey, I am. Twenty one TWC two versus two. Twenty twenty one TWC two v two. Azer, I'm sorry that we're not in the Great Depression right now. Okay, when she is not right about a specific thing. <laughs> also, the rest of us when we're not right about a specific yeah, thing, because we, we were also wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we're all bad at being right I mean, about just, things, bro. Yeah. Just yeah. me trying to explain the McDonald's pooling and Walmart pooling. That was uh. Yeah, no, let's not go back reaction. into that. Everybody, let's, let's... <laughs> everybody that's legitimately comparing the U.S.'s OWC, like, streak to... Oh, yeah, no. No, they don't doesn't, know. Doesn't watch the Taiko World Cup, has no. not watched the Taiko World Cup ever, especially hey, not a Japan match. Because hey, for, like, for, I want to say, like, 11 years, Taiko has just been completely dominated by Japan. Japan doesn't send their best players. Japan's best players just sit still and watch their fucking like B team beat the shit out of every other country. Like they lose one map per tournament is not even close. You don't know how good you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Japan has won every World Cup since 2014. Um, and that is since they have been called Os Taiko World Cup. So as soon as they became official, Japan has won every single one of them. Yeah, keep in mind that the top 25 players in Taiko, 17 of which are Japanese. You can go way further than that. Like, if you yeah. look a year back, it's a lot more diverse now than it used to be a year ago. But, like, a year back, it was, I think, probably, like, 45 out of the top 50. Nine of the top <laughs> it, 10 it was are really bad. Japanese. They didn't lose a point this year. I didn't realize. They didn't lose a point this year. Imagine, okay, yeah. has that ever happened before in any World Imagine, Cup? Probably like, not. Other game modes don't even like understand, right, the dominance of J the Japanese and Taiko. Because imagine being so demoralizing so towards the rest of the world that they don't even send their best players anymore. Yeah, but yeah, you're literally bad. playing for you're just playing for a podium spot, third place at best, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's like, like it's it's just 2019. They, they got a forfeit match. They got a forfeit. They got a forfeit, they got a forfeit and down. then they didn't lose a single point other than, uh, after that. Like, and they finished first in qualifiers by a humongous margin. Yeah, Dude, that's a long, their that's ranks. A long their long rank sub in qualifiers was 15. <laughs> of how many maps? Hold on. How many uh, maps? I'm guessing. T I'm, I think it's 10. Three. To beat Japan and Taiko, yeah, you require like a Herculean effort. To like a whole country needs to just get on the grind and like grind super super fucking hard yeah. where, or we just like, need more taiko cabinets that aren't in japan like there's literally one, none in the united states how how transferable are taiko skills from the arcade to the actual like 
way most yeah, of the time. Yeah, because you're playing They, 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 they still transfer right? over well enough, I think. Yeah, it's exposure like, obviously, and reading. Obviously, it's yeah. not going to be one-to-one, -one, but it does help you at least understand how to play the game. I don't know how people read Tycho. I mean, anytime I look at Tycho, I'm like, I gives me motion read sickness this at all. I have no idea. Yeah, the the horizontal no, scrolling is just like messes with my brain. I mean, people say the same about Guitar Hero, except it's vertical. Like, if you look at a Guitar Hero, like, uh, I don't want to say play field, Chart? like if you, if you look at huh. that long enough, like you're gonna get the stuff scrolling after you look away. Like it's, you're gonna, oh look, yeah, it's gonna yeah. feel weird. Like, I don't know. I I it. learned to read Guitar Hero pretty easily when I was first starting out because the notes are circular instead of rectangular, and in compared to like Mania, where the notes are rectangular, and my brain does not like it. That happened. I remember you trying to get it in Rock be Band. If you spin them, you just make them just put us on a circle skin. Easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. For me, it's for me. Like I can I can read charts in Guitar Hero and Rock Band fine, but I can't read Mania because I don't know. I don't know why I'm just bad. The tilt of the playfield, probably. Yeah, maybe so. I just wish that standard had the scoring method that the other game modes had. Mm -hmm. uh, really I don't wish that. Personally. Like score uh, version two, like where, like, like mania, where it's literally a hundred percent accuracy based. I, yeah, if yeah, anybody nah. ever misses, they flash red, and nobody cares. Know, okay, a, Chippy. Has a thing. Oh. Also, there's okay. Here's okay, an anyways. interesting. An interesting thing for me with, like, the other modes, because I, I really only watch them in, like, their World Cups and only a couple matches even then, but, like, it's nuts to me how close all the maps are in other modes because yeah. of the because of the scoring system. Like, you see six FCs per map on every single map, or, well, FCs because it's a different system, but, um, like, you see six S ranks on every single map in, like, Mania through the Grand Finals, and the score gaps are, like, maybe somebody gets a 989k and it's this crazy underperformance and they lose the map by, by 10k. Like, yeah. I don't understand yeah. how that no, scoring every, system works. Every that's time so I, weird to watch. Act, every single time, like, yeah. people just get... Uh, it, it's what people would see if people got their wish of, like, oh, combo shouldn't matter. People should just be based off of act. In standard, that would be, like, extremely boring because, like, combo breaks would no longer matter. You no longer have, like, intense kind of, like, swing moments. You would just, like, look at a map see wow the map is being played right now and then you look at the result at the end there's no incentive for you to actually pay attention to what's happening yeah yeah i, I also think... wouldn't mind like variable i mean i think this has been tried i think dia mentioned uh, at some point that he's tried this in other tournaments where you have like dt2 dt3 ac ac scoring no mod one miscount scoring like stuff yeah. like that because some skill sets like no mod one if you only based Bring it off ac it'd be like Oh, I FC'd the map and I uh, low rolled Ack on a stream and we lost the pick. It's like that makes no sense at all. Yeah. But on like DT2s where it's pure stamina, I would rate like a really good Ack on a DT2 or DT3 where somebody one missed on aim, like way yeah. more skill representative of tapping than like 94% FC. Double yeah, Miles Jib Dada, can we get variable scoring in the World Cup this year? That would actually be so cool. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's it's so unrealistic just because yeah, you have to decide works. for every map in the pool. Like, you get a random random tech map. It's like, well, do you make it a combo it's map? Scorpy 2. Or an That's map? Just, yeah, Scorpy 2. Scorpy 2 is still an option. Pooling yeah. Mad Machine uh, and scoring it by Ack. Why not just have an Ack pool? Do you guys want to know what this actually takes? This takes dev time into the tournament client. Which is so never it, going to happen. Have yeah. Yeah. So it'll never happen. Yeah, uh, It's the main bra. It's okay. It's fixing laser, guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I mean, like, it also takes a lot of reform in the map. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just that mod pools will have to go. Like, you would just have to well, also, like, be a lot more flexible in pooling if you want to do win con pooling, which is something like syncing up both win con and slot, like, slot pooling is going to be very difficult <laughs> i i think if you just Honestly, look at i think if you look at traditional slot pooling you could probably do that with a moment of thought but if you change it up from traditional slot pooling then it would get more difficult I mean, I think most... to talk like three times by I, the way. I just think that oh. the way that standard is played like the legit like the gameplay of standard is so different compared to other like other modes because like mania like has a uh, has we, we have 2dx to go off of and then taiko of course has like the japanese taiko right so I think that the the how do I say this the abstract gameplay of standard is standard unique makes standard. it super hard to have it one is. specific win condition. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I I mean I wish like I wish that you know scoring could be a little bit more like the other modes, but like 
in actuality, the gameplay is completely different. Yep. I mean, I think the, the tournaments I've much... seen that have... Oh, go ahead, Dada. Okay. The score is still pretty much, like, not exactly the same as the DS game back, uh, back like, uh, Owen Don or, like, it be Agents. It's not exactly the same, but it's very, very close. So, like, there is a basis for it. It's just, like, a really old and at this point, like, forgotten basis, right? Yeah, I, I think the tournaments I've seen that have done that kind of thing well have been, you know, have had three pools, right? An accuracy pool, a, a combo pool, and a score v2 pool, and each team can ban a pool, but nobody wants to practice three pools, so, you know. Wait, why, uh, why combo and not, why not miscount? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we, well... Miscount for that, aim maps. Mis miscount yeah. for aim maps. Miscount for no matter one. Um, I think that's kind of all that we have to talk about yeah. regarding OWC. We're, uh, we've are we've gone off topic a little bit, and it's, it's been fun. <laughs> uh, but also, we're at two hours now for, for the podcast, which is about as long as we want to go. Um, so any final thoughts about this year's OWC from anyone? Final thought? It was... One of the best OWCs I think we've had in a long time. Great grand finals, great storylines throughout. And hopefully hopefully next year is just as good. Final thought, if I say what I think. United if, States. If Cookie I Z, I play think, for Korea? Will, if I say what I think, I'll be suspended six months. Um, I need a tapping coach. Somebody help me, and I will be the I will be the leader for 2024. I will FC every map. Please just HR teach me how to tap. Firing worst HR player tapping oh. our 2024 USA versus yeah. South Korea rematch version three in a row. I can actually the see that tapping happening. Tapping boot camp. Just go out <laughs> to like. I have an entire year. I have an entire year now. I I graduated. I have an entire year. I am just gonna. <laughs> I, it's just I on, I'm on the grind. Go yeah, out to the T1 win. facility in Korea and just start <laughs> grinding tapping. Go to Facebook. It's, I'm on it. I'm on He's it. He's boot camping in Korea with, uh, worst, uh, with worst HR uh, player anyways, next year. Uh, thank thank right. you, everyone, for joining us. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I know it's been a very... Um, been a very long podcast and we've had a lot of fun with this talking and you know shedding some you know some some deep lore and whatever uh i i duly hope that we get to continue this next owc and even for other tournaments uh thank you guys so much to each and every one of you for joining on this very lengthy owc <laughs> uh season for those who don't know i've been running for full circle for a, a while now since um you know since april and I've been trying to do episodes every single week. This OWC season, I had decided to uh, give the role to Dio, his knowledge and his drive to actually make Full Circle happen, as well as, you know, just having the general, you know, inside and outs of OWC makes him super valuable to the team. So I thank him very much for that. Um, I thank T1G for writing out outlines every single week because, you know, he has been very supportive of my endeavors in full circle and i've been trying my hardest to to make full circle happen prior to owc and this is kind of like the highlight of the year so i thank them for that i think each and every one of our guests who come every single week i know organizing it has been kind of a struggle and we all have different availabilities but we somehow pull through i also put I've, i picked up the role of operator recently because um our previous operator had a bit of a an um uh, availability issues but it's been it's been a long journey for us here and these are kind of just like my closing thoughts on not only OWC not only but full circle as a whole so um that's kind of it for me and I I again I thank every one of you for dedicating your time your effort and of course your your faces <laughs> for for full circle thank you guys so much yep. thank you to all the viewers as well yeah. The, the uh, podcast, the podcast has reached uh, such length that the actual match it it's ended. Now we're on bracket reset. Who wants to say for Who wants to say for bracket reset? I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I get rewatched. My grandparents. Yeah, yeah we're good. Taking a nap. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, Anything else, Dio? Thanks everyone on full Thanks circle. Uh, final thoughts. Good OWC. Let's see it again next year. Course Ace One. See you. Um, see ya. Thank you guys. You everyone. Peace. This has been Full Circle. I've been Kate, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.